Three cities, three divisions, two countries, but now our road odyssey concludes in Denver. D-backs with a chance to record eight wins on a road trip of at least 10 games for the first time in franchise history. It's been a crazy weekend at Coors Field. We'll do it once more before heading home. It's Arizona Diamondbacks baseball, brought to you by Sanderson Ford. Good afternoon from Coors Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brenly along the way. The series and road trip finale here. Patrick Corbin and Chad Bettis, your pitching matchup this afternoon, Bob. And I can't imagine that we'd see something today that we haven't seen yet in this series so far. It's been no weird, wild stuff. Yeah, you expect to see crazy things in Coors Field, but I think this four-game series has exceeded even our expectations. I mean, we've seen a little bit of everything, uh, starting with... The starter on Thursday, Zach Greinke, not only did he pitch well, he contributed offensively, but caught the attention of his skipper with his head first slide on a stolen base. Socrates Brito with a long home run in his first at bat of that ball game on Thursday. Unfortunately, didn't end well for Socrates. Yeah, he fouled the ball off his foot, broke his toe, and then the Thursday game ends with Nick Ahmed in as a defensive replacement getting the game-winning hit. What else would you expect from a defensive replacement? And the defense got a little ugly the next day, Friday. Jake Lamb, three errors at third base. Yeah, really had some issues down there, some tough plays, some tough decisions, although there were some really nice defensive plays in that ball game. Well, yeah, very late in the game, Ricky Weeks Jr. made that terrific catch and then it's been a wild ball game back and forth Gene Segura's had a big series he walked four times yesterday we said it was a crazy series you were going to see stuff we'd never seen before saw an eighth inning meltdown by Josh Colmenter yesterday a single two doubles a homer and two walks Rocky scored four in the eighth last night we're set to go. The series and road trip finale. Patrick Corbett and Chad Bettis first pitch coming up on Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. Buy Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Double Jack Burger today only at Jack in the Box. By Oregano's. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano's, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. And by your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money.
Jacks Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins by Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and general brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros today. And by Gigablast, 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. Oh, we have just a beautiful day here in downtown Denver, Colorado. Sunny skies ahead, not a cloud in the forecast. Bob Brindley has guaranteed sunny skies in the series finale. D-backs and Rockies first pitch is next. Welcome back to Coors Field, a lovely sunny Sunday in downtown Denver. Steve Berthune, Bob Walsh, Bob Walsh, Bob Brenly and Todd Walsh <laughs> along the way. 86 and sunny and we're set to go here. Diamondbacks a chance to go eight and two on this 10 game road trip. And the D-backs in their history, Bob, on a road trip of at least 10 games have never won eight. First time for everything. Here's how Chip's gonna line them up this afternoon. Gene Segura leading off at shortstop. Michael Bourne out in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Jake Lamb back in the lineup at third. Ricky Weeks Jr. getting a start in left field today. Chris Herman doing the catching. Yasmani Tomas in right field. Brandon Drury at second base and left-hander Patrick Corbin on the mound. Got a Bud Sealy baseball there. We gotta update that. Yeah. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Rockies. It's Chad Bettis, 27 year old right hander. No pitcher in the National League has given up more hits this year than Chad Bettis. Despite that, however, he's got a winning record and he's won his last two starts, both against the Yankees. How about that? Beat the Yankees in consecutive starts. Uh, tied his career high with eight punch outs in his last start against the Yankees. This will be the fourth time this season that with Bettis has faced the Diamondbacks. ERA of 611. He's given up 25 hits and three home runs in 17 and two thirds innings against the Diamondbacks. An eye on the Rockies defensively brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. There he is, that guy, Charlie Blackman, once again out in center. He'll be flanked by Ryan Rayburn in left, Carlos Gonzalez in right. It'll be Nolan Arenado and Trevor Story on the left side of the infield with DJ LeMayhew and Mark Reynolds on the right side. Nick Hundley back behind the plate today for right hander Chad Bettis. And behind the plate for the men in blue, the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, will have our balls and strikes today. John Tumpain is at first, Paul Nard at second, and Alan Porter is the third base umpire. It's been a crazy series here at Coors Field. First six games of this Diamondbacks road trip, the average game time was two hours and 49 minutes. Three games here, the average game time, three hours and 55 minutes. <laughs> so settle in. Arena baseball at its finest. 
hopefully we can move this along, get on a plane, and get back home for a long homestand that starts tomorrow against the Phillies with Robbie Ray on the mound. Gene Segura in the box. We are set to go. The finale of four at Coors Field, and Segura hacks at the first pitch and drops it into right center field. A leadoff single. <laughs> Well, Gene Segura, after walking four times in yesterday's <laughs> ball game, figures, well, they're not going to throw me in strikes. I'm going to jump on the first thing I see. So Segura aboard. He had never walked three times in his career. He walked four times yesterday. It's been that kind of series here. Michael Bourne, 250, couple of home runs. He homered yesterday. Well, if the theme of craziness continues, Michael Bourne will probably hit a home run in the upper deck. I'd vote for that. <laughs> Good day to hit in this park. Not a cloud in the sky. A little gentle breeze is blowing out toward the left field corner. Michael has four hits and four RBIs in this series. Had one of the game winners the other night. Ending what was the longest nine inning game in the history of the National League. Four hours and 30 minutes. That's in there for a strike. And with the bright sunshine above. No clouds rolling in today. Yesterday we had some. Overcast some cloud cover, but uh, it's going to be tough on the guys on the right side of the field looking up into that afternoon sun. That's some lovely weather to close out this road trip. The 0 1 to Bourne. That one gets behind Hundley and Segura moves up. Another thing to watch for for the Diamondbacks today is Michael Bourne swings right over the top of a breaking pitch and Nick Hundley can't corral it back there. Gene Segura alertly advances 90 feet on to second base. Diamondbacks ran crazy on Nick Hundley. First game of this series six stolen bases. Has to dive out there and get that one again. Chad Bettis you'll notice here works very quickly and sometimes too quickly. He'll rush through his mechanics but this is a Pitcher that Chip Hale really respects as he goes about things the right way in this ballpark. And the D-backs have hit pretty well against Bettis before, so hopefully a chance to get to him today and create some more momentum going into the upcoming homestand. Here's a broken bat roller to third. Arenado has it. Puts Segura back to the bag and just does get born in time for the first out. You know, talking about Bettis and uh, his quick delivery out there. Doesn't waste a lot of time between pitches. It's a little reminiscent of Ruby De La Rosa earlier this year for the Diamondbacks. They wanted him to work quicker between pitches, but yet keep your mechanics and your wind up and your delivery uh, the exact same pace, but work more quickly between pitches. I think Bettis uh, sped everything up initially, worked quickly between pitches and worked quickly during the pitch, but supposedly has slowed himself down just a little bit. Be quick, but don't hurry. Yeah. Yes. The late great John Wooden always said. Here's Paul Goldschmidt. That one misses up and in. 1 0 to Goldie, who's hitting 314 home runs. Fifth in the National League in OPS. And leading the majors in both walks and on base percentage. There's a bouncer to shortstop. Trevor Story has to work around Segura. Pretty good concentration there by Trevor Story. I mean, Segura did everything he could do to try to distract the Rockies shortstop on that ground ball. Gets out there and hurdles over the grounder, trying to screen the vision of Trevor Story, but he stayed with it and got the out at first. Well, the D backs have scored one run in the first inning in each of the last two games. A chance to put a run up on the board here with Segura at third and two down for Jake Lamb. Jake 290 leads the Diamondbacks 15 home runs and 51 runs batted in. Rockies have the overshift on the right hand side. There's ball one. Trevor Story the shortstop just scoots over a bit. Arenado could probably defend the entire infield all by himself <laughs> but he'll just cover the left hand side. Missed again 2 and 0. Oh. Nolan Arenado takes care of everything between second and third base.
Jake ahead, three balls and no strikes. Ricky Weeks Jr., the on deck man. Jake, six for 10 in this series. He's got a double, a triple, a home run, and six RBIs. The 3 0 is in there for a strike. Ball four. First walk of the ball game issued by Chad Bettis. So they're on the corners with two down for Ricky Weeks Jr. Ricky getting the start in left field today. 236. He's homered four times. Now during the open of the show, we had some issues with uh, some of our technical gear down in the truck you didn't get to see the fine catch that Ricky Weeks made up against the left field wall possibly a game saver. Yeah, even uh, our, our open about what went wrong in this series <laughs> went wrong went wrong. <laughs> Imagine that it didn't go as planned but that happens. <laughs> Strike one. This was Ricky Weeks Jr. A game saver perhaps off the bat of Nick Hundley. Initially it looked like he stole a home run. I believe the ball would have stayed in the ballpark but certainly would have gone for extra bases. What a nice running play by Ricky Weeks Jr. And there's a base hit RBI. It rolls into left center field. Segura scores. Lamb at third. One nothing Diamondbacks. Nice. Well, as we've seen in this ballpark in this series and over the years, every run is important. Cash them in when you get an opportunity, whether it's the first inning, the fifth inning, or the ninth inning. Ricky Weeks puts the Diamondbacks on the board with a ringing single into center field. Well, Chip Hale sticking with his plan of getting Ricky at least one start every week or so. This is his fourth start on the road trip. He really liked the matchup of Weeks Jr. versus Chad Bettis, and it's already paid off for him. Here's Chris Herman getting the start at catcher today. Herm the worm, 302, six homers, four for six in the series. Three for six lifetime against Chad Bettis. Yeah, Chris came into Thursday's game in right field and singled in his only at bat. And then Friday got the start behind the plate, went three for five and scored twice. Two balls and one strike on Chris Herman. Up the middle, off the mound, and into center. Lamb will score. It's an RBI single for Chris Herman, and it's 2 0 D backs. A walk, a couple of singles, all with two outs. Chris Herman stays hot at the plate. Boy, I'll tell you, the catching tandem for the Diamondbacks with this RBI now it gives them a combined 50 runs driven in this year. They've hit 14 home runs between the two of them. Wellington Castillo hitting a little over 270. Chris Herman hitting in the low 300s. What a combination. Yasmani Tomas, 0 for 4 yesterday with a walk and a strikeout. That snapped a five game hitting streak. But it's been a very productive series and road trip for Yasmani. 258, now 12 homers. And a two home run game here Friday night. Sends that one out to Carlos Gonzalez in right field, and that's the end of the inning. Diamondbacks strand two, but they get to Patrick Corbin coming up.
Patrick Corbin a quick 2-0 lead. Patrick is your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the D-backs. Four wins in 15 starts. He beat the Blue Jays at the Rogers Center on Tuesday. Yeah, pitched around a lot of traffic in that ball game. He walked three, gave up nine hits, but only surrendered the two runs. You see the numbers on the season for Patrick Corbin. Definitely want to keep it on the ground in this ballpark, something Patrick has done extremely well this year. All Weiss's Rockies beginning today, four under 500, just a half game ahead of the Diamondbacks in the NL West. Charlie Blackman once again leading off in center field. DJ LeMay, Hewitt second base. Nolan Arenado at third. Trevor Story at shortstop. Carlos Gonzalez in right field with Ryan Rayburn in left. Mark Reynolds at first. Nick Hundley doing the catching for right-hander Chad Bettis. And here is Charlie Blackman. And a home run to lead off the ball game for the Rockies yesterday. And he takes ball one. This is what it looked like. First Rocky hitter against Shelby Miller. Right in that happy zone for Charlie Blackman. He has a big happy zone. Covers the entire plate. And inside and outside off the plate. But that one was right on that inside corner down at the bottom of the knees. He has homered four times in his last six games. Batting an even 300 on the year. Patrick ahead a ball and two strikes. Charlie Blackman as usual has been a real nuisance for the Diamondbacks. He's got five hits three RBIs couple of walks in this series. He's also scored four runs from the leadoff spot. Reaches out and rolls it in the hole lamb in front of Segura and Blackman who runs well beats it out. Hit very slowly between third and short. And a beat goes on for Charlie Blackman. He's a 344 lifetime hitter against the Diamondbacks. Against the rest of Major League Baseball, he's a 282 hitter. Might have to throw away the scouting report and start over on Charlie Blackman. He is always a tough out, and he's aboard to lead it off for a red hot DJ LeMayhew. They're having a look at this in the Diamondbacks dugout. Let's see. Chip Hale up on the top step. Alan Campbell, the video coordinator, having a look, and Chip will challenge right here. Going to risk his challenge on the first Rockies hit of the ball game. Let's have a look. Remember, it's a catch when it's in the back of Goldie's mitt. It has to be in the back of the pocket. They must feel they have a pretty good case. Yeah. First base umpire John Tompain on the left, the crew chief Jeff Kellogg on the right. Yeah, you always hope you're right, obviously, on these challenges, but especially if you use it on the very first batter of the game, if you lose this challenge, you won't have a challenge available for the rest of the ball game. Well, I, I don't know. From the replays we've seen, he looked to be safe. And the call is safe at first. Ooh. So there goes the challenge. One batter in. So here's DJ LeMayhew. Crazy hot right now. Had a three run homer yesterday. He's seven for 14 in the series. And fourth in the National League and hitting at 328. And that OPS is up nearly 150 points over last year's career high. He has become quite a player. Patrick misses inside. And it's 1 0. And LeMay, who only one homer away from tying last year's total for the entire season. He's got five, hit one off the very top of the fence in left center field and bounced it on out of here. Deep as part of the ballpark here at Coors. Chris Herman sets up down and away, and LeMay, who fouls it off. One key for Patrick today will be to do what he did last week against the Blue Jays, which worked so well for him, and that's establish the inside part of the plate, work in to both righties and lefties, and do it early in the ball game. Something Chip Hale really believes is important in any ballpark, but especially here at Coors. 
And I mentioned Patrick throwing those ground balls 150 ground balls this season the sixth highest total among National League starters. That's always a good formula in this ballpark. And may you able to check his swing and he's ahead two balls and one strike. Blackman as we mentioned the other day not running this year nearly as much as he has in the past he swiped 43 bags last season so far just six this year. He had a turf toe injury that kept him out about two weeks in April. He says that he's noticed Bob that pitchers now are faster to the plate than they've ever been before. Hmm. So that scared him off a little bit. And also the Rockies have been playing from behind so often this year there are a lot of situations in which he should not be running anyway. So for the most part he stayed put very slowly hit to shortstop. And nicely turned by the Diamondback infield Brandon Drury at second base. They erase the leadoff single two down our eye on defense for the D-backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. An outfield of Weeks Jr. in left born in center Tomas over in right field Lamb and Segura on the left side of the infield with Drury and Goldschmidt on the right side Chris Herman doing the catching and lefty Patrick Corbin on the mound. That's a real nice turn by Brandon Drury. Yeah. Well they felt that they would be able to get Brandon some at bats at second base with Segura at shortstop today. Two down, bases empty, Nolan Arenado carves that one foul, and it's 0-1. 298. The OPS third in the league and up more than 70 points over last year. Leading the National League in RBIs and tied for the league lead in homers. A ball and a strike. The pop up behind second base Drury drifting way out there into shallow center and a nice play by Brandon Drury to run that one down. We are through one at Coors Field. D-backs lead the Rockies 2-0. Coors Field, 2 nothing Diamondbacks. Hey, D-backs fans, introducing Pepsi Moji. Every time you grab an ice-cold Pepsi 20-ounce bottle this summer, you'll find a Pepsi Moji on the side of the bottle, and there are hundreds of different designs. So show the world how you feel and what you love with Pepsi Moji. Just use the hashtag, say it with Pepsi. 2 nothing Diamondbacks. Brandon Drury leads off the second against right-hander Chad Bettis.
batted in 269, eight home runs. Got the start at third base yesterday, walked twice, and they're at second today. Two and one. So you've got Drury playing second, Segura playing short. Nick Ahmed's sore hip is much better. He felt great after the game yesterday. However, Nick's wife Amanda is about to give birth, and Brandon Drury knocks that into left field. Rayburn over to cut it off, a leadoff single. That's the fourth hit for the Diamondbacks already against Chad Bettis. But anyway, uh, Amanda has had a few false alarm hospital trips uh, back and forth this week, so Nick has a plane ticket, BB, booked, ready to go if Amanda goes into labor during the game. Chip didn't want to start him and then have to pull him out of there. So fingers crossed Amanda can hang on for one more day and we can get through this and Nick will get home and everybody be fine. But uh, that's the reason he's not in there today. One thing to have a plane ticket, but it's another thing to be an hour away from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the airport is uh, in Saskatchewan for some reason. Here's Patrick Corbin. Well, I'm sure Nick is thinking about his lovely wife Amanda back in Arizona, and we wish them nothing but the best of luck. Just hang on a little bit longer. We're almost home, Amanda. Nick trying to keep cool. It's a very warm day here, bright, strong sunshine. Patrick Corbin bunts it back to the mound. The Mayhew covers. Bettis throws him out. Drury moves up. Nicely done. Well, we were talking about this yesterday, Bob. That play, which was a little bit of an adventure for D-backs pitchers the first month of the season, it's become a little more routine now. You know, and you can only practice so much, and, and bunting against a machine that's throwing in the 90s or bunting against a coach that's throwing 50 or 60 miles an hour can never simulate game action when you've got a pitcher out there on the mound that might throw any of four or five different pitches in any location. Not an easy thing to do, but the Diamondbacks have gotten much better as the season has progressed. So Drury in scoring position one down for Gene Segura, who walked and scored to lead off the ball game. It's been a great road trip for Gene Segura. He's got 11 base hits and eight walks on the trip. Well, the 11 base hits, I'm sure Diamondbacks fans believe because they've watched Gene Segura all year. Gene Gene the hitting machine, but, man, the patience has been unbelievable on this trip. They used to call Eddie Yost the walking man. Maybe we should uh, <laughs> give that title to Gene Segura. Well, the good news is, he, you know, even though he's taking more walks, it's not like he's getting cheated. He's, he's not uh, missing pitches in the strike zone. When he should swing, he has swung. Down one and two. Blast it into center. Another hit for Segura. Matt Williams waving Drury home. The throw is cut off, and it's 3 nothing Diamondbacks. Well, he's back to Gene. Gene, the hitting machine. Two for two. That was just setting the Rockies up last night, taking all those base on balls. He smoked that ball back up the middle of the field, and... No hesitation on the part of Matt Williams or Brandon Drury. We've talked about the outfield here at Coors and how the outfielders have to play so much deeper. Rarely will you get an opportunity to throw out a runner at home plate. And once again, give Patrick Corbin a star for that successful sacrifice bunt to move Drury into scoring position. Absolutely. Michael Bourne grounded out his first time up. We told you at the top of the broadcast that no pitcher in the National League has given up more hits this year than Chad Bettis. And so far, he's given up five hits and recorded only four outs. That's a strike. A lot to ask of Michael Bourne. Chip Hale fell playing so much in this ballpark in this series. We know about. The Brito injury, it's left them shorthanded in center field, but he checked in with Michael and felt okay to go again today. It's chopped to first, Reynolds has it. Two down. Time now, Bob, for your Valley Honda dealers. Heat of the game. Well, we're gonna go with Crazy Eight. 
Diamondbacks looking for their eighth victory on this road trip and the eighth inning has been uh, quite an adventure for the Diamondbacks in this series Thursday night they faced nine batters gave up three runs in the eighth Friday night faced ten batters gave up four runs in the eighth inning and yesterday nine batters four runs again A crazy eighth inning Segura at second two down for Goldie who grounded out his first time up. And he takes a strike. The Diamondbacks in their history have won seven games on a road trip, lasting at least 10 games or more, five times. They have never won eight. So a chance to make some history today. Goldie down 0 and 2. It's hard to win eight out of 10 at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you go through a long road trip like it's been, and a day off in Philly, four there, then two games basically in 36 hours in Toronto, going in and out of customs, long flights back here. You get here late. Then three insane games in this ballpark. Insane is right. I mean, you can come away from that trip with eight out of ten. That is gold stars all around. I mean, you really hope the Diamondbacks will be able to carry this momentum back to Chase Field where it has been a house of horrors 13 and 25 at home this year as opposed to 23 and 16 on the road. Long homestand starts tomorrow fans dbacks.com slash tickets. Three with the Phillies beginning tomorrow. Yes he went Goldie strikes out. But the Diamondbacks add one more they lead it three nothing. Three nothing lead. Hey, D-backs fans! If you can't catch the games on TV, you can now stream them live on your mobile device. Just use the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and Diamondbacks baseball with you wherever you go. The cleanup man today is the rookie shortstop Trevor Story, a lead off the Rockies second against Patrick Corbin. Patrick now with a three nothing lead. Story 266. He's got 18 home runs. Three for 10 in the series with a pair of RBIs. He's hit safely in six straight. And he's got a base hit into center to lead off the Colorado second. Here's Cargo. Seventh in the National League in hitting Gonzalez 314. He's homered 15 times. He's got four hits in the series. Three of them are doubles. He doubled twice yesterday. Coming off a sprained wrist. 
We thought we might not see him again the rest of the series, but uh, he's come back with a vengeance. Well, he swung and missed hard on a pitch against Brad Ziegler the other night and immediately grabbed that wrist and sort of limped back to the dugout. Didn't look good, but he's just fine. And he hits that one right into the shift. Drury can't make the short hop, and everybody's safe. Well, they had the infield perfectly positioned. Brandon on that short hop couldn't quite corral it. So two aboard to lead off the Rocky second. Well, right where he needed to be, that ball was hit extremely hard. Brandon tried to play it off to the left side right there and took a little bit of a squirrely hop, hit him in the glove, and went out into shallow right field. Nothing on the board as of yet. Here's Ryan Rayburn, 246 and seven homers. The scorer is still trying to make up his mind. Ball one to Rayburn. Rayburn with a pair of hits in this series, had a double and an RBI Friday night. And they put an E4 up on the board, so the error on Brandon Drury has Gonzalez at first and Story at second. Rockies, in the words of Walt Weiss, were awful against left hand pitching last year. And even playing in this ballpark, they were 19th in the major leagues in runs scored versus lefties. So they needed some right hand power. They went out and got Ryan Raber in this March. They added Mark Reynolds as well. He's on deck. In the air along the right field line. Tomas is over there. He's got it in fair territory. Story will tag and head for third. Long run for Yasmani Tomas that time. Fortunately, that ball was hit a mile in the air. Able to cover the ground necessary to get over near that foul line and make the catch, but Trevor Story able to move up 90 feet. They're on the corners with one out for the former Diamondback, Mark Reynolds. Four for 11 in the series. He homered Thursday, 291 for the year. Squib shot. Drury's under that one. Cargo wanders off the bag and they got him. Carlos Gonzalez straight a little too far off the first base bag. Brandon Drury got him over there and that ends the inning. Walt Weiss on the top step. Let's have a look. That kind of a lollipop throw from Brandon Drury. Maybe the runner was in his line to Paul Goldschmidt, but. I'm not sure where Cargo was going, trying to get a big jump and go first to third if that ball got down. Rockies had a threat, but they run into an out there, and that ends it. It's 3 nothing Diamondbacks.
lead at 3 nothing as we head to the top of the third. Hey, fans, beat the heat on the 4th of July. Forget the 100-plus degree weather. Spend the day inside air-conditioned Chase Field. D-backs take on the Padres for a 6-10 matchup. Then we'll open the roof for a post-game fireworks spectacular presented by Gila River Casinos. For tickets, visit dbacks.com. Strike one to Jake Lamb as we open up the third. Big homestand coming up, fans. Dbacks.com slash tickets. Robbie Ray on the mound tomorrow against the Phillies. Zach Greinke on Tuesday. Archie Bradley goes Wednesday afternoon. We have a day off Thursday. Then three against the Giants. That'll be a big weekend at Chase Field. Goldie Bobblehead is Saturday. The Bobblehead is tired from the trip as well. It's yeah. made all the stops. Stop the presses. The Giants lost last night. Can you believe it? They're tied up 1-1 with the Phillies right now. Second strikeout for Chad Bettis. One down in the third. So Goldie Bobblehead Saturday. Kids run the bases Sunday. And then Monday against the Padres got the 4th of July fireworks. So a big weekend. Long home stand. Come on down, fans. Dbacks.com slash tickets. Looking forward to some home cooking. Long overdue. Ricky Weeks, Jr., an RBI single in his first at bat, the starter in left field today. Tell hey, you what, you walk around these ballparks holding the Goldie bobblehead, and people give you funny looks. <laughs> Imagine that. What's that guy doing? Why has he got that thing? Why is he taking pictures? Isn't he a little too old to have a doll? No. You're never too old for a Goldie bobblehead, <laughs> baby. None of us uh, are. <laughs> Bobblehead's in good shape. The packaging is a little worse for wear, but that's to be expected. Customs guy held it up. What is this? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Well, it's a Goldie bobblehead. All right, go on through. Yeah, that would be an interesting uh, subject for one of Todd's pregame shows. You know, take a shot of a guy's suitcase when you leave town the first day of a road oh, trip. Oh, no. That and would then be... a shot the last day no, of the road trip. No, you can't put that on Ooh, TV. It's ugly. Man. It's ugly and doesn't smell all that great either. They did a tremendous job on the pregame show. Earlier on this road trip, uh, interviewing the great Roger Riley, yeah. who coordinated everything getting in and out of Canada, and along for Roger, three city, two country, ten game road trip where he's got to get customs and all the stuff in and out, and he did a spectacular job. Just went flawlessly. That's in there for a strike, and it's a full count three and two. I'll tell you, those guys don't get the credit they deserve, the traveling secretaries. When you think about all the things that could possibly go wrong, like a bad haircut. Just file that down. That's yeah. all you do. You know, and, and <laughs> we never have to worry about a thing. I mean, I've been on teams where you check into a hotel at 3 o'clock in the morning, and there are no room keys there for the team. We oh. caught them by surprise. Or you get to the airport and there's no plane, or there's a plane and there's no flight attendants. Yeah, Roger, things run as smooth as silk under Roger Riley. Yeah, we are very, very lucky to have Roger coordinating all the travel here. Ricky Weeks, a oh. hot smash off the chest of Arenado. Boy, that was a bullet down there, and Weeks is aboard for the second time today. You know you hit it hard if he can't get it. That's true. Boy, Ricky, when he barrels one up to his pull field, it's got some hair on it. I mean, that ball is sizzling down there to wow. third base. That's a base hit. Wow. Two for two, Ricky Weeks. A one out base runner now for Chris Herman. The Hermanator had an RBI single his first at bat, getting the start behind the plate today. Yeah, we saw Todd in the pregame show today quizzing guys about their room number at the various hotels on this trip. Do you remember your room number in Philadelphia? Yeah, I th you know what I did in Toronto? In Toronto, I went to the floor that my Philly hotel room was on. <laughs> and you get all, you know, oh, it's too late. I've already hit the button. It's a very slow roller for Story at shortstop. And he won't be able to turn two as Herman's aboard. They get the force on weeks. Hey, fans, a D-backs home run today means a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow at participating Jack in a Box locations with a purchase of a large drink. 
Right, Chris Herman pulled up lame down there at first base. Looked like he was grabbing at his right thigh as he crossed the bag. Yeah, he's still stretching it out down there. He's the backup center fielder right now. And in addition to being the backup catcher, oh, he tripped coming out of the box. Stumbled a little out of the box right there. Ended up limping across the base. And you saw him reach down with his right hand to his right leg. You're not allowed to be hurt. Ken Crenshaw is out there on the case. Diamondbacks head athletic trainer. Going to give Herm a minute to walk it off. He's been indestructible this year. I think we, you always point that out, oh, justifiably yeah. so. We take that for, for granted with Chris, but he just takes a beating back there. He takes four or five foul tips every start behind the plate. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Well, fortunately, he's still ticking here and good to go. As Monty Tomas swung at the first pitch his first time up and flying out to right. By the way, we have a scoring update. On the ball that Cargo hit in the bottom of the second, the one that uh, Brandon Drury couldn't quite get. They rule that E4, but they have taken the error away from Brandon Drury. And that's now a single for Cargo. So the error comes off the board. Second time in two at-bats that Tomas swings at the first pitch and flies out to right field. Bottom third coming up, 3-0 D-backs. The tooth trot today. This is toothy, the tooth, and fresh, the tube of toothpaste. And watch how close this finish is at the wire. Toothy Ooh. hangs on, bristles a distant third, and they are now tied for the season lead. That's a toothy, the tooth, and bristles, the tube of toothpaste. And there is a or bristles rubbing himself on the tooth, which is a little disturbing. So there's the tooth trot. That was a dramatic finish. Exciting. Nick Hundley, who went to the U of A, leads off the third for the Rockies. Hundley, 258, four home runs. Do we know who U of A is playing? Did Coastal Carolina end up beating TCU? Yeah, they did. Yeah, okay. How about that? Chris Owings' brother, Connor, is in the... College World Series championship round for the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. I think it's unbelievable that Arizona is able to win, what, six elimination games? That's amazing. Nice high hop for Segura at shortstop. Little double clutch for Gene, but he throws him out. Chad Bettis, the pitcher.
Not much of a hitter, one for 22 on the year. 10 strikeouts. Three for 65 lifetime. That's an 046 average. Ouch, big. Did you ever have a guy, a, a pitcher that you just said, you know, don't even bother swinging because all you're going to do is hurt yourself. <laughs> Why even try? I don't think I phrased it quite that way. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly inspiring. Huh? I would encourage them, see as many pitches as you can. Don't, right. don't swing till you get at least one strike, which was my way of saying, boy, you're a bad hitter. <laughs> just don't read between the lines, that's all. A very high chopper over the mound. Brandon Drury will barehand it, throw him out, two down. Hey, Diamondbacks fans, fill out your 2016 insurance MLB All-Star game ballot now at dbacks.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Vote up to 35 times. You can vote today. You can vote tomorrow at dbacks.com slash vote. You know, it, it, our director, Phil Mollica, insists on singing that song Ooh. as Charlie Blackman walks up, because I always like to just lay out and listen. Because if I had my way, all Bar Park uh, music would be 80s music, but that's another show. <laughs> but Phil enjoys the song also, unfortunately for me, sings it in the earphones as Charlie walks up. That's so probably why he needs a vacation. Only so one of you get to actually enjoy the song. Exactly, my point exactly. <laughs> Thanks for ruining another one, Phil. Enjoy, uh, where's he going, the Caribbean? Turks and Caicos or one of those. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Anyway, he won't be here. No. Best part-time gig he's ever had. Here's the 0-2 to Blackman. Oh, that's oh. way out of here. Say goodbye. Oh, oh, boy. Charlie Blackman's at it again, his 12th. He has now homered five times in his last seven games. Fourteenth home run given up this year by Patrick Corbin. Uh, home runs are going to happen to a guy who's around the strike zone a lot, but it should never happen on an 0-2 pitch. That was a slider that just didn't seem to take any break, stayed on the inside part of the plate, and boy, did he put a charge on it. Blackman is a guy who has always hit lefties well, and we just saw an example of that. So far today, he's two for two against Corbin. 451 feet, 451. On the Blackman homer, his 12th of the year. DJ LeMayhew now. Get into a double play his first time up. I don't want to encourage DJ LeMayhew to get a base hit, but this is critical. Because our man up in Prescott has a lot riding on this, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a beat the streak. Terry Sims picked DJ LeMayhew today. And Terry's he's close to five and a half million bucks. Creeping if he wins today, it'd be 50 in a row. You can play beat the streak at MLB.com. All you got to do is pick one or two batters every day, any player, any team, any game, and if he gets a hit. You start your streak and you continue it on. It's a lot of fun to play at home. And our man Terry is on a roll right now. He is leading the nation. If he wins today, it'll be the all-time longest streak in the Beat the Streak game. It's amazing. 3-0 to LeMayhew. There's a the strike. Well, he's picked a very hot hitter, DJ LeMayhew. 7 for 15 in the series. You go back to June 4th, he was actually hitting under 300 for the year, but since June 4th, he's hit over 400. Well, Patrick Corbin got the first two outs on ground balls, but a home run and a base on balls brings up Nolan Arenado. First walk for Patrick today. Arenado popped up in his first at bat to end the first. By the way, our official scores going back to our bet on Thursday. Now, I don't know if that was just a Diamondback player or any player. 
who would hit a home run longer than Jake Lamb's home run here in dead center. That line drive that went 453. Since we're down to the last game of the series, I think it was for either team. I, yeah, I, <laughs> you may be right. Anyway, Blackman's homer was 4-5-1. So I'm almost sorry to say it'll be Heltenberger's on you, at least to this point. Of course, uh, if we have to leave before we can collect the burgers, I'll just I'll take straight cash. <laughs> just inside 2-0. Mike Butcher sees something he does not like. He might take his whole 30 seconds just to get to the foul line. This is a, now he breaks into a little bit of a trot there. It looked like he was formulating in his mind what he was going to say when he got out there and then realized, geez, I've only got 30 seconds. I better get on out there. That was like the Lee Smith walk in from the bullpen. You know, the walk in from the bullpen for Lee Smith was one thing, but what was really slow was when <laughs> Lee Smith, he didn't go down to the bullpen until the eighth inning. He'd come out of that dugout on the third base side at Wrigley Field, and it would take him five minutes to walk whatever that is, 25 yards. Lee Arthur Smith, well, since the home run by Blackman, Patrick Corbin has thrown six balls and only one strike behind on Arenado, 2-0. Check swing roller right to Goldie. And Patrick is out of the third, but Blackman's 12th makes it a 3-1 ball game. interview that uh, I did earlier today with Chip Hale for those of you scoring at home that's at Todd Walsh on Twitter about uh, the Arizona Wildcats he's been in constant communication with Jay Johnson he was texting him last night after they beat Oklahoma State and Bob the advice that uh, Chip told me that he got back in 86 from Jerry Kindle was uh, I just thought profound and, and simple don't do anything that you can't normally do play your game and then let the rest take care of well, whatever happens. It, I, I love the fact that Sean Miller, the Arizona Wildcat basketball coach, reached out to Jay Johnson and said, somehow you got to find a way to try and enjoy this as well. That's a fair ball down the right field line. Brandon Drury, two for two. He'll stop there as Cargo picks it up and gets it back in quickly. That's good Stay advice. within yourself. Yeah, right? Don't try to do what you can't do. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Do what you can do and do it well, but. Stay within yourself. Let me rephrase that. You might recall the miracle on ice in 1980 in Lake Placid. Herb Brooks, the head coach of the United States, said by all accounts, by every guy that I've ever talked to on that uh, hockey team, for the final 10 minutes of the game against the Soviet Union, he only said one thing, and he said it over and over. Play your game. 
That was a great movie. Oh, the great Love that one, huh? Kurt Russell did it. I thought Kurt Russell the did first a tremendous one. Job. Oh yeah, the first, the first incarnation. Yeah. There was another one. Oh yeah. The first. You remember, of course, who played Herb Brooks and the one you're speaking of. Yeah, Kurt you, Russell. You, <laughs> what are you talking about? You're you getting confused. You got me. <laughs> Normally, I don't. I'd, I'd be on this, but. So there were two movies. Yes, there were. Yeah. What was uh, the other one? I'm talking about Miracle. Yeah, you're right. What are you talking about? Miracle. <laughs> it's been a miracle. long road trip. Well, I'm talking about the original one. You remember Carl Malden played Herb Brooks? No, I see. That's what I'm. Come on, you didn't Carl know. Malden played Herb Brooks it was the, in the original. What was that like a made for? TV it was. Yeah, thing? It came out in like 1981. Oh, see, come on. Oh. <laughs> I was watching Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> Those crazy Duke boys. Twice on Friday. Yeah, that's true. 0-2 on Patrick Corbin. Kurt Russell did a heck of a job. Well, Coach he Matthew. did. I thought it was it was a good movie. I like yeah, that movie. Solid. Yeah. How are we doing there, Walter? Okay. Corbin gets it down on an 0-2 nice. count, and they move uh, Drury along. I need to play my game. Which is what exactly? <laughs> what do you got? No, I just I need to. You had me there. <laughs> is this the is this the uh, decaffeinated coffee thing yes. again? <laughs> did you hear this story? No. He, he I'm in the oh, dugout. Uh, and he goes, man, I am. I was really tired the first week of this road trip. I'm exhausted. I can't figure out why. And I look down in the hotel. I'm drinking decaffeinated coffee all week. <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> He's going. You got to read the instructions. Apparently. Red is decaf at the Ritz, just so you know. How did the uh, quiz go, by the way? Are you quizzing guys on their room numbers and uh, all that stuff? Uh, a lot of uh, blank stares, Bob. You saw it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's tough. I mean, when you change hotels every three days. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got off on the wrong floor once. That's not a metaphor for anything. I just got <laughs> off on the wrong floor. <laughs> Segura. Doing oh. The, the, there is a play-by-play -play announcer that I worked with who shall remain nameless who actually went down to a hotel and said, my key's not working emphatically and the woman looked at the card and said sir this is the Marriott you're at the West oh. <laughs> I'm not going to name names Kirk Keel back but I, I mean <laughs> good thing yeah there's can a strike have. two and one yeah yeah I mean it, you don't even know what city you're in half the time yeah. then you play the Philly you play the four game or Friday through Monday you don't know what day it is yeah that's that's the one that yeah that's the killer that right there we have a tough life don't we <laughs> yeah, it's hard. a lot of complaining Carl Malden, huh? Uh huh? Remember those Carl Malden American Express card commercials? It was right at the peak of all that. I'm some shocked that. Oh, he, yeah. he, he, so he got some TV movie money out yes, of that deal, huh? Yeah. I don't remember that. Was he on hiatus from street to San Francisco? <laughs> yeah. I think he and Michael Douglas yeah. had a bit of a rift. 3-1 oh. to Segura. Guess what? He's done it again. Oh, man. He walked four times yesterday. Gene Segura, in 10 games on this road trip, has now walked nine times. Nice. Well, as I said a moment ago, it's not like he's just not swinging. He's just not swinging at bad pitches. Because when he's gotten pitches in the strike zone, he has absolutely sizzled them. D-backs have something going here. A single by Drury to walk to Segura. Two on, one out for Bourne. Who's 0 for 2? Does Michael Bourne enjoy the Bourne movies? Is there a possible <laughs> quiz there? I think you're you're onto something. I think I'm just coming in, spitballing here, as they yeah. say. But <laughs> Feels like a free screening at least, right? Well, maybe you could go down there and quiz him on. Uh, Jason various Jason Bourne moments from the movies. He must get that a lot. This is a think tank up here. <laughs> <That's>, oh, <boy>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a, you had us right till then. Yeah, Tom. now play your game. Play stay within yourself. That's right. <laughs> one and one. Giants are at it again. They're leading the Phillies five to one. Johnny Cueto on the mound today. Cueto's made 15 starts this year. Giants are 13 and two when he starts. One one to Bourne. 
In other news, and you know how much attention I play to the American League Central, but the Cleveland Indians have won nine in a row, and they're a perfect nine and zero oh against the Tigers this year. How about that? Tito Francona's tribe, nine three winners. You got a five game lead in that Central Division over the Royals. Oh, well, go up more today with that win. Ian Kansas Kennedy. City's winning. Yeah, they got Ian Kennedy on the mound. What a stop by Reynolds in fair territory. A terrific play. And he saved at least one run. That looked like extra bases down in the corner. Michael Bourne with a top spin grounder that Reynolds just tackles down there right on the foul line and then wins the race to the bag. We'll see how the Rockies want to play this. Second and third first base open with two outs and Goldie coming up. He has grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. Well, they walk Goldie intentionally in the second game of this series in the first inning with runners at second and third. But you know the way Jake Lamb's hit in this series I don't think if I'm Walt Weiss I want to face Jake Lamb either. So let's see Hundley will crouch down back there and they'll at least pitch to Paul Goldschmidt. I don't know if he'll get anything to hit. Now this could be one of those pitch him carefully and if we fall behind 2 and 0 we'll go ahead and walk him. He jumps on the first one and fouls it all. Now that changes the nature of the at bat. Jump ahead 0 and 1. Now all of a sudden you try to go after him. He's got Brandon Drury at third base, Gene Segura at second, and two outs. See, for me, that wouldn't change anything with Goldie. If the, if the theory was if we walk him, we don't care, continue to pitch him tough. Go off the plate away, bounce a breaking ball, maybe elevate a fastball. Is this a uh, protection? In the works. I mean, Jake Lamb's had yeah, a big series here. I think so. Not only this series, but you know, coming in from Philadelphia, yeah. Toronto, where he swung the bat extremely well on this road trip. In the dirt, one and one. Yeah, I think occasionally teams can outsmart themselves in a situation like this. Oh well, we're ahead 0 and 1. Let's go ahead and try to get him out. That's when you end up making mistakes and getting hurt. Well, Lamb in this series so far today, Jake has walked and struck out, but he was six for ten against the Rockies coming in with six RBIs. He's on deck, first base open. They work to Goldie, the one-one pitch from Chad Bettis. Gets this up in the air, deep left center field. Ryan Rayburn watching it go over his head. Drury scores. Segura scores. Goldie hustling into third, and he's in there. A two-run triple, and Rayburn may be hurt. Rocky's trainer will run out there and take a look at Ryan Rayburn as Goldie makes it 5-1 D-backs. Rayburn was running an S pattern after that ball in the gap in left center changed directions a couple of times I didn't think he thought it was hit as hard as it was that ball carried a long way out there to the deepest part of the park. It looked like it hit off his glove and then Rayburn hits the wall it looked like his sunglasses may have ricocheted back into his face or something. Well Goldie aboard for the first time today so he has now. Tied the record for consecutive games reaching base against the Rockies. 48 consecutive games that Goldie has reached base safely versus Colorado. That ties the record set by Mike Piazza between 1995 and 1999. Mayburn will be able to stay in the game. Second triple this year for Goldie, and that's five runs, BB. That's right, tacos. You almost expect tacos in this ballpark. If you don't get tacos, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. Now we've mentioned it throughout this series. 65% of the games played here at Coors Field, there have been 10 or more runs scored. 65%. Well, here is Jake Lamb. Rockies will put the shift on. Jake has walked, struck out, scored a run, 0 for 1. And 6 for 11 in the series. Alan Porter says no. Jake has six multi hit games on this road trip. He's batting nearly 470 on the trip. 
Two doubles, two triples, three homers, and 11 RBIs in nine games. And that, when you factor in that he went 0 for 5 with five strikeouts in Toronto. Yeah. And I take that as a really good sign to have a bad day like that and just sh shrug it off and come right back the next day and put together some good at bats. That one might have hit him in the foot. Yeah, that's how Socrates Brito ended up with a fractured toe. That was after he homered here in game one on Thursday. Hey, we had a little fun with the exchange rate when we were in Canada playing the Blue Jays. Well, how about this? In order to get tacos here at Coors Field, the Rockies have to score seven runs. That, um, that sounds fair, actually, <laughs> considering what we've been through this weekend. <laughs> sounds about right. Little tapper foul, and it's two and two. Diamondbacks already with five runs on eight hits against Chad Bettis. He's trying to get out of this fourth inning. Goal to get third base and two down. And he strikes out Lamb, but Paul Goldschmidt hits a two run triple, and the Diamondbacks have a 5 1 lead. Bottom oh. half of the fourth inning. Time to take a look at this day in baseball history. We have to go back a little ways for this one. 1913, Eddie Ainsmith, the oh, catcher, boy. stole three bases in one inning. You are shameless. Second, third, and home. A catcher, a 23-year-old catcher. <laughs> nice going. We should just change that to this day in catching history. <laughs> yeah, we, we bypassed the fact that Frank Robinson hit two grand slams in the same game today. There was a Bob Gibson one yeah, too. Bob I think, Gibson that threw his fifth straight shutout he on this with, day. Uh, Eddie Ainsworth Absolutely. or whatever his name was. Trevor Story, who's a shortstop and not a catcher, leads off the Rockies fourth. Story batting cleanup. They drop cargo to fifth against the lefty Corbin. Swing and a miss, and Story, who has his strikeout issues, is down 0-2. Leading the major leagues in strikeouts. This is his first ever game batting cleanup. And so far in the big leagues, the rookie has hit in every spot in the batting order except eighth. And he's on top among all players in the game in terms of strikeouts, 104.
Patrick Corbin has pitched into the seventh inning in each of his four starts this month. He's won both at Chicago and at Toronto his last time out. Ahead of story, one and two. Just there, the count is even. Chip Hale was emphasizing it, how important it is for all of the rotation. And, he, and we believe we've seen that a lot lately, that the Diamondbacks starting pitchers get into the sixth and seventh inning, because when they do, Diamondbacks become a really good team. Mm -hmm. And Patrick has done that all month long. Right now at 40 pitches, 24 strikes. Did he go? No, he didn't. John Tumpain down there. The count is full three and two. Patrick Corbin has pitched very well on the road this year. Four and one with a 2.68 ERA in eight road starts. The Diamondbacks have won six of his eight starts away from Chase Field this year. Three, two to Trevor Story. Ball four. Second walk issued by Corbin. Ever since the Blackman homer, Bobby's really had an issue throwing strikes. Yeah, I can't figure that out, and neither could Mike Butcher. That's why he made that trip to the mound. Hey, partner, we, we want to salute a real baseball guy. Renee Latchman, uh, who is the catching and defensive positioning coach for the Colorado Rockies. This is his 53rd consecutive season in professional baseball. He's been a manager at three different places, Seattle, Milwaukee. He was the very first manager for the Florida Marlins. He's held a variety of coaching positions. He was on Tony La Russa's staff uh, yeah, a couple sure. of different times and uh, a true baseball guy. Like Don Zimmer always said, he never had a real job in his life. Yeah. There's the chief baseball officer who flew in for the game yesterday. Now, Renee Latchman was on his staff in Oakland and in St. Louis. He's in there with Bob Gephardt, Tony La Russa, who was the GM here in Colorado for a long time, now on the Diamondback staff in the front office. That's why Gep has such a good sense of humor. <laughs> He does actually. He's a funny guy. He really is. Drives around uh, spring training in a golf cart, big cigar. And Patrick has really had an issue finding the strike zone. The second time through this Rockies order. 44 pitches in the ball game and barely more strikes than balls. Gonzalez singled his first time up. He's got five hits in the series. Three of them are doubles. And behind 3 0. Oh, quickly getting into trouble here. He walks Story. Now he's yet to throw a strike to Gonzalez. Shift is on for the Diamondbacks. Something's wrong. Something is really wrong. I mean, this is absolutely the wrong formula in this ballpark. You never want to issue free passes knowing that one mistake could end up putting a crooked number on the board. Mike Butcher, one more time now. Yeah, since that home run to Charlie Blackman, he's thrown 19 pitches, 14 of them out of the strike zone. Walk story on a 3 2 pitch. Walk cargo on four pitches. So two on, nobody out to open up the Rocky Ford. Patrick had the ground ball working nicely at the Rogers Center last week. 12 ground outs in that. Win over the Blue Jays, really liked his change up. Did a nice job of keeping the ball down, working inside with that fastball. Which he's had to do a lot lately when he finds the teams are laying off that slider, but right now he can't throw anything in the strike zone. Two on, nobody out for Ryan Rayburn. Rayburn flied out his first time up. Can't check his swing that time, and it's 0-1. He 
There you go. Now he's ahead. No balls and two strikes. Diamondbacks have turned two double plays behind Patrick Corbin today. A nice 6-4-3 in the first. And then a pop-up double play when Gonzalez got himself doubled off in the second. Ahead of Ryan Rayburn, 0-2. I think that's become more and more common, Bob, and Patrick's finding this more and more. The teams are not swinging at that slider the way that they used to, and he's really had to go to other things. Fastball or changeup. It makes you wonder if they're recognizing something that they weren't able to recognize in the past. I don't know that Patrick's changed anything. I don't think he's changed his grip on that slider. Certainly the release point looks to be the same. Fastball misses and it's two and two. 50 pitches for Patrick, only 26 strikes. Story at second, Gonzalez at first, still nobody out in the fourth. The bouncer that Goldie smothers. They get the force on Cargo. Patrick's at the bag. But Rayburn beats it out. And Story's in at third. Nice play by Paul Goldschmidt. Started way off the baseline to begin with. Still has to make a diving stop on that ball. After it got over there in time, Rayburn apparently just beat it out at first base. First and third, one out now for Mark Reynolds, who popped up into a double play to end the second. It was a real base running blunder by Carlos Gonzalez, who wandered too far off the first base bag. Brandon Drury doubled him up. Missed inside, 1-0. What do the best pitchers do when they find that nothing's working or the things they depend on aren't there for them? Well, figure out which one is close to being good and go to that pitch. A lot of times it's just a fastball. If you can't command your slider, if your changeup isn't there on a given day, just really focus on fastball command. Try to hit that outside corner at the knees. Try to push the hitter off the plate with that fastball. And then you'll find yourself in situations where you're ahead in the count and you can try the slider again. Or try the change up again. Fly ball center field, Michael Bourne. Story at third, he will come in and tag, and it's a 5 2 ball game. Especially in a situation like today, Patrick is well aware that the bullpen is operating on fumes right now. He's got to figure it out, figure something out to stay in this ball game and give Chip Hale the innings he needs to get to the tail end of that bullpen. The catcher, Nick Hundley, grounded out to lead off the third in his first at bat. Ryan Rayburn, the runner at first, two outs and a run in. Nick Hundley's hit safely in five straight games. He's got eight RBIs in his last five games, including a couple of home runs. And it was Hundley who hit that ball the other night on which Ricky Weeks Jr. made a tremendous catch against the wall in left field. To preserve a Diamondback lead, there's Ricky back out there today. A start in left field. In there for a strike, two and one. Hey. 
Oh, wow. Right off the head of Jeff Kellogg. You can see wearing that soft cap underneath the mask. I know a lot of fans saw Paul Emmel oh, hit in the head with a bat the other day. Batter lost it on the backswing and it hit above the mask off that soft cap and put a huge gash in Paul Emmel's head. Makes you wonder why the umpires don't wear helmets back there. Yeah. You know, base coaches have to wear helmets, catchers have to wear helmets. Umpires wearing the soft cap back there. The Paul Emmel thing was awful. Oh, it was horrible. Bleeding all over his head, terrible. Just missed with that one, and it's a full count three and two. Rayburn, a runner at first will be off of the pitch. The pitcher Bettis on deck. This is the man you want to get right here. Goldie will play behind the runner at first. Here goes Rayburn. Hundley hits it hard in the hole. It's a base hit. Rayburn takes the turn. He's in at third. Top spin grounder through that left side. That'll get Bettis to the plate here, who's not much of an offensive player, to put it mildly. But boy, it would have been nice to get that third out right there and have Bettis leading off in the fifth. More pitches to throw for Patrick. He had retired four in a row at one point in the third inning, Patrick Corbin. He got the first two outs in Hundley and Bettis, then Blackman homered. And he has really struggled ever since. 60 pitches, only 31 strikes. It's already been a 27 pitch inning, 16 of those out of the zone. Got to get this guy because Blackman is on deck. He's singled and homered, and suddenly, if he gets up there, you're looking at a big Colorado inning. Behind in the count, two and one. Blackman's had a big series. Get him right here. Don't want to go to a full count and get Hundley on the move over there at first base. Called strike three. He strands Rayburn and Hundley, but the Rockies get one more. Diamondbacks have a 5 2 lead.
Well, D-backs lead the Rockies 5-2, and fans, there are only a few days left to enter the Chaz Roberts AC giveaway. You can nominate a family or a nonprofit organization that's in need of a new AC unit by logging on to chazroberts.com slash coolplay. Entries are due by Thursday, June 30th, so you're running out of time. It's the Chaz Roberts AC giveaway, courtesy of our friends at Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. They always do such a great job. They got their own uh, impromptu air conditioning unit out there on a bright, sunny, warm day in downtown Denver. It's not that hot. I mean, you know. Yeah, they might have a youngster under there. They're trying to keep out of the sun a little bit. There you go. Ricky Weeks Jr. leads off the D-backs fifth against Chad Bennis. Ricky so far two for two, a couple of singles. He's got an RBI. Tell you what, Ricky has made 15 starts this year. And when he's been in the starting lineup, he's hitting 269 with four home runs. And today, two for two. Chad Bettis has a way of kind of hanging around against him. You look up and he's pitched six, seven innings. He matched a season high with eight strikeouts in his previous start. That was last Tuesday at Yankee Stadium. And he beat the Yankees as well here at Coors Field in a start prior to that. Missed inside, and Ricky's worked at full three and two. It's already the fourth time this year the Diamondbacks have seen Chad Bettis, so no surprises to this point. And Ricky works a leadoff walk. Third walk issued by Bettis. It's Chris Herman who was limping around. Badly after coming out of the box and stumbling his last time up, but he looks okay now. Checks the swing and takes a strike. Herman had an RBI single in the first. He's now hit safely in five straight games and seven of his last eight. This is bounced to Reynolds who spins and throws. They get one and Herman beats it out. Tell you what, Mark Reynolds looked pretty good down there defensively. Yeah, he looked pretty smooth. Tell you what else is smooth. When the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. You know what's smooth? Your transition. Yeah. <laughs> I was just a little worried about Chris Herman. That's how he uh, stumbled out of the batter's box back in that third inning, trying to leg out a potential ground ball double play. But he looks none the worse for wear that time, got through the bag quickly. Well, so far in two at bats, Yasmani Tomas has swung at the first pitch and both times flying out to right field. He was 0 for 4 yesterday, a walk and a strikeout. He's got four hits in the series. As Monty had a two homer game here Friday night. His second two homer game on this road trip. And when it's all said and done, you're going to say, wow, you know, Tomas had a, had a nice road trip so far. He's got five home runs and nine RBIs. Squirts that one the other way and it rolls into right field. Two on and one out for Brandon Drury, who's two for two so far today.
Two singles, he scored twice. Getting the start at second base, Gene Segura playing shortstop, and the expectant father, Nick Ahmed, getting a day off. Nick is still here, at least he was earlier. Hopefully, Amanda hasn't had to call yet. Nick's wife, Amanda, just about ready to give birth. He's got a plane ticket back to Phoenix if he has to leave the game. A little squib shot the other way. Bettis is on it. And they retire Drury's. Well, let's see what Patrick Corbin can do with runners at second and third and two outs. Yeah, we were told coming into this game that Bettis has started to mix up his arsenal a little bit more, throw more curve balls, throw more change ups. He had kind of fallen in love with the sinker, cutter, slider combination, but through 81 pitches in this ball game, he's only thrown seven curve balls and one change up. <laughs> Everything else, either fastball or slider. Broken bat, ground ball to LeMahieu, and Bettis is out of the fifth. Diamondbacks lead the Rockies 5-2. Backs, greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. We'll look around the rest of the National League West. Giants playing the Phillies. Phillies will be in a chase field tomorrow for the first of three. Right now, San Francisco leads that one 5-3. The Padres have already lost 3-0 at Good American Ballpark. And later tonight, Clayton Kershaw, 11-1 on the mound for the Dodgers at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Charlie Blackman leads off the fifth for the Rockies against Patrick Corbin. Blackman... Homer his last time up, hit it 451 feet for his 12th of the year. He's two for two. Goes back to something, Bob, we were talking about with Patrick Corbin in the last half inning. Opposing hitters are laying off more pitches than ever versus Patrick. And as a result, that uh, strike percentage is going down. They're laying off balls that are outside the zone much more than they did last year on him. So he's got to figure out a way to solve that issue because they're just not chasing against him like they used to. And the numbers bear that out. Last year, opposing hitters swung at pitches outside the strike zone about Corbin against Corbin about. 38% of the time this year it's down to about 30%. A little bit of familiarity. Teams have seen more of Patrick Corbin now. Hitters have a better idea of what he's trying to do out there on the mound. I guess one way to combat that is to throw more sliders for strikes. You know, if guys are going to lay off that pitch, throw it for a strike. But that slider's just been 
little more inconsistent this year. Doesn't seem as hard or tight or sharp as it has in the past. It's sort of come and gone for Patrick this year, it seems. Blackman reaches down and lifts that out to Yasmani Tomas in his big red glove. And that's the first out in the fifth. Isn't that a children's book, Yasmani Tomas in his big red glove? It should be. I think you're onto something there. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> it's got that big red uh, webbing. Yeah, two-tone. It's quite a glove he's got out there. Looks like one of those things you play high lie with. A sesta. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Oh, I, uh, we've talked about it before. A high lie guy? Yeah, well, no, but back in the day when the umpires got the memo to start enforcing uh, the length limit on outfielders' gloves. You know, Brett Butler used to walk around with a glove that dragged on the ground. <laughs> Bigger than he was. So the umpires, uh, you know, started carrying little, uh, you know, like cloth measuring tapes in their pockets, and they would measure the outfielder's glove. And if it was too long, they had to get a new one. Yeah, yes, Bonnie's got a big glove out there. So, but back in the day, we, you know, we just did the same thing. You know, one of those things they use in high lie, and somebody you know, text or phoned or carrier pigeon or somehow got a message to us that it was called a sesta. Sent one by Raven, maybe. <laughs> you see Corbin trying to establish inside like we talked about earlier against D.J. LeMahieu, but he's down 2-0. We oh. need a, a base hit for our man Terry in uh, Prescott. Here's the strike. And we'll take a base hit for LeMahieu and then a double play ball off yeah. the bat of uh, Nolan Arenado. Just a little harmless bloop single yeah. get, to get our guy in the book. LeMahieu has hit into a double play and walked. And again, Patrick comes inside, but just can't throw that for a strike, and he's behind three and one. Trouble on deck, Nolan Arenado. Leading the league in home runs and RBIs. He's tied with Trevor Story for the league lead in extra base hits as well. Well, that's the fourth walk issued by Patrick Corbin, all of them since the Blackman homer with two outs in the third. And that time he missed all the way across the plate from low to high. Chris Herman had set up on the outside corner at the knees, and that pitch sailed up and in. So now he'll deal with Arenado, who's 0 for 2. Arenado has four hits in the series, all of them doubles. He's also walked five times. And he has, Patrick's going to have to throw him strikes here because Arenado this year has walked only once less than he struck out. Comes inside again, misses again. Just can't get in there for any consistent strikes. And he's falling behind in counts because of it. Seventy six pitches for Patrick Corbin. Thirty eight balls, thirty eight strikes. That's blasted to Ricky Weeks Jr. It's a base hit. Lemay, you going to head for third as Weeks bobbles it a bit. And they're on the corners with one out for Trevor Story. We credit to DJ LeMayu. He was running hard coming off the first base bag. And Arenado is now hit in nine straight. Now just in and out of the glove. Ricky juggles it a little bit. I think that LeMayu was probably going to go first to third anyway because Ricky Weeks was moving to his left as he got to that baseball. But the fact that he juggled it made it an easy choice for LeMayu. Okay, big at bat in the ball game right here. Two on, one out. They give Ricky Weeks Jr. an error on wow. that. E7. There's Trevor Story. And again, it's ball one. Yeah, LeMahieu was really busting it towards second. He was going to get in there anyway. Shortstop Trevor Story has been a big problem this year, beginning on opening day when he homered twice against Zach Ranky. 
12 games against the Diamondbacks this season. Five homers and 17 runs batted in. Mayhew's at third. Arenado at first. One out. And Patrick Corbin cannot throw a strike. He walked two in the last inning. He's already walked one in this inning. Mike Butcher's been out there all day. Now I think we're going to get some activity in the Diamondbacks bullpen now. Yep, guys are stirring down there. Looks like Randall Delgado will start getting busy with Garvin Alston. Well, this is a recipe for disaster in this ballpark. Oh, yeah. He was very fortunate in that fourth inning when he issued back-to-back -back walks to start the inning. Only one run scored on the Mark Reynolds sack fly. You just can't put guys on via the base on balls in this yard. 80 pitches in the ball game and more balls than strikes for Patrick. He walked LeMahieu with one out. Arenado had a single. Now the 3 0 to Story. Ball four. The bases are full. That's five walks for Patrick. Well, he's shown a real knack lately for getting ground balls, and he could really use one right now. Bases full, one down for Cargo, who has singled and walked. The Mayhews at third, Arenado at second, Story at first. There it goes. Will it stay fair? It's gone. A grand slam for Carlos Gonzalez. And for Patrick Corbin, his worst fear realized. Poke the dog with a stick often enough, eventually the dog's going to bite you. You just cannot walk, guys, in this ballpark because this is liable to happen on any given pitch. After two walks and a base hit, he gives up a slam to Carlos Gonzalez. 455. Yes! <laughs> he beat Jake Lamb's 453. Here comes Chip Hale, and that will be the last pitch that Patrick Corbin will throw today.
never forget two home runs a solo homer by Charlie Blackman a grand slam by Carlos Gonzalez. That was Cargo's fifth career grand slam his last was also against the Diamondbacks last September. And now it's a 6 5 D back deficit the new pitcher. Your Arizona Federal Credit Union pitching change is Randall Delgado his 33rd appearance. Ryan Rayburn the hitter for the Rockies still only one out in the inning and there's strike one. I talked to Tom Candiotti about this a lot. One of the, the last steps for a pitcher before you really become a good major league pitcher is knowing how to heal yourself. How to make adjustments out there when things are going bad. If you can't throw one of your pitches for a strike, figure out a way to get in that strike zone with something else. And Patrick is at that stage right now where he needs to learn how to self correct out there on the mound. You can't expect the pitching coach and the catcher to come out there every time you get in trouble and try to get you back on track. Got to figure it out yourself. It seems like that slider has just not been there for him. At least not consistently, and that was his money pitch for so long. And it's seemed to have left him just trying to figure things out. All right, if it's not going to be there, then what? And he hasn't come up with an answer yet. And he's been so good throughout his career, Bob, at challenging guys inside. Patrick is one of the most competitive pitchers we see out here. He's certainly one of the most aggressive and he pitches inside as well as anybody both the righties and lefties and he was not able to do that for strikes today. Now between the Charlie Blackman home run and the cargo grand slam he threw a total of 55 pitches. 34 of them were out of the strike zone. Five walks in that stretch between the third inning and here in the fifth with one out. And they are just not chasing balls out of the strike zone against him like they have before. Well, Rayburn's putting up a fight against Delgado. It's a full count, three and two. Randall threw 35 pitches in that marathon game on Friday. Gave up a run on two hits. This is out to Yasmani Tomas. Came in, now backs up at the track, and he misplays that one off the wall. A bad read by Tomas, and Rayburn's got a double. He came in, broke back, then kind of circled, and it dropped in over his head. A bad line. Uh, it looked like he quit on that ball right there. It short hopped off the warning track up against the fence. He might have lost it in the sun, too, at the very end there. He was running around in circles out there trying to get to the spot. Fifth double for Ryan Rayburn. Mark Reynolds now. Well it's still Coors Field and it's still just a one run ball game. We got a long way to go here and now they're going to come out and talk to Randall Delgado the plate umpire and crew chief Jeff Kellogg is out there. They're looking at the mound the landing spot and we're going to need some help from the grounds crew. Now we've talked about this before occasionally uh, when a pitcher lands on the edge of the other pitchers landing area out there it can uh, be very uncomfortable not to mention very unsafe but you can see a big chunk wow. has come out right there. They'll have to get some clay and some water and tamp that back down. It's like somebody was trying to get out of a sand trap. <laughs> and it's uh, taking the ground screw a little while to respond here. There's a ditch in the pitcher's mound and nobody seems to have noticed wearing a purple shirt. And we'll get some guys and some shovels out there. Nice ball into that thing. I've never seen that before. They use clay to fill those holes in to make it a little more firm than just loose dirt. And a huge chunk of the clay has come out. Well, while we have a moment, let's remind you fans that you don't want to miss All American Weekend at Chase Field coming up July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It'll be a big weekend. 
Saturday, July 2nd, you'll get the Goldie bobblehead. It actually says America's first baseman on the bobblehead. Nice. A, a great bobblehead. So you'll get that on July 2nd, Saturday, against the Giants. And then on the 4th of July, against the Padres. Stick around for the Fireworks Spectacular presented by Gila River Casinos. Get your tickets for All-American Weekend at Chase Field at dbacks.com. The Goldie Bobblehead Saturday, then 4th of July fireworks. Well, the fireworks by themselves or the game by itself is enough, but you get both of them on the 4th of July. What a deal. Well, that's a great way to spend your 4th. Some baseball, some fireworks, some air conditioning. We got you covered. Well, they didn't actually use clay to fill the hole. They just took the broken piece away. And you can see it's still kind of a mess. I mean, I, just, I, I thought the guy took a cup of water out there to use to tamp the clay back down. But he, I mean, that's, that's a terrible job. That's, that's terrible. Horrible. Look at that. That's awful. This is the big leagues. What are we doing? And good for Mike Butcher to get out there and say, no, no this is not going to work for us. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, Jeff Kellogg is agreeing with him. Get back out here and fix this. He wants to tell Walt Weiss what's going on here. Make sure that both managers are aware of the conditions out there on the field. I mean, they, let's at least put a little effort into it, guys. Well, they're good with the tarp, not so much with the uh, tamp down on the mound. Well, try putting some dirt in there this time. Something. I mean, you could fit your whole foot in that hole. Yeah. Did they look at it and go, ah, oh, it's fine? Yeah, it's fine. It's very <laughs> dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. So you just club it with that thing, huh? That big. Yeah, that's a mixture of soil and clay that they're putting down there. And when you tamp it down like that, it makes it more of a hard surface and less likely to come loose. Although we did see the big chunk come out that caused this whole mess right here. And the first thing Randall will probably do is go out there and dig a hole in the dirt they're tamping down. <laughs> well, there is that. But it'll be where he wants to land. It won't just be a pothole out there in the middle of the mound. I mean, we got enough injuries as it is. But they appear to be doing a nice thorough job this time. Well, see, that's good. That looks nice. Couldn't have done that the first time? I guess not. And Randall will try that out. He's also been standing around for a while now. Too. And we got the stamp of approval, as it were. We're good to go. Tune in tomorrow. We'll show you how to weed your tomato plants. <laughs> You're on Diamondback Home and Garden Television. Mark Reynolds now. Let's try this again. Four runs in on the Gonzalez Grand Slam. Rayburn at second after his double, still just one out. Segura's got a top shelf, yeah. and they double off Rayburn at second. Second time in the ball game. The Diamondbacks have done that. Caught a Rockies base runner wandering too far off the bag. The first time it was Cargo, this time it's Rayburn. Diamondbacks trail it 6-5.
air conditioning and plumbing cool plays of the game. Both off the bat of Mark Reynolds, once in the second and once in the fifth as the D-backs double off a rocky runner. Yeah, Brandon Drury caught that one, threw back to first base to double off the runner, and then most recently Gene Segura fielding this line drive. And yeah, the amazing thing was Gene made the adjustment in midair, started to get the ball out of his glove and get ready to throw before he even came down. Really made that play right there. And of course, Segura will lead off the sixth against Chad Bettis. D-backs now trail at 6-5. Although they've out hit the Rockies 9-8. Segura has singled twice. Walked and scored twice. He's also got an RBI. Well, as of now, partner, we're right on the number. There have been 100 hits in this series. Stop it. 100. Come on. Really? 28 on Thursday, 30 on Friday, 25 oh. yesterday, and 17 so far today. This place is just, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's a beautiful ballpark. But it will drive you just bonkers. One and two. A hundred hits. A hundred hits. How are we looking? Two and two, good take by Gene there. He's got six hits in the series, a couple of doubles. He's knocked in three runs. Another hit for Gene. Gene, the hitting machine. He's aboard for the fourth time today. Three singles and a walk. And that was the Diamondbacks' tenth hit in the ball game. Let's see, they have played now the D-backs 165 games at Coors Field. And when they get at least 10 hits, their record is 58 and 27. Michael Bourne 0 for 3. Segura has now got 13 hits on the road trip and nine walks. <laughs> what a year he's had. He is really proven to be exactly what the Diamondbacks thought they were getting and more when they acquired him from Milwaukee. Michael Bourne hits this one out to Cargo in right field. That's going to get down. Segura will head for third, and Bourne hustles into second with a double. Good start here in the Arizona sixth. A daily double at the top of the order. Segura and Bourne coming up with some big knocks in this road trip. Michael Bourne a little soft line drive down that right field line. Cargo can't get there in time. And with Michael Bourne's speed, he's going to easily end up at second base. That's Michael's fifth hit in the series. Steve Foster, the pitching coach, out to talk to Chad Bettis as the Rockies' bullpen gets busy. Johan <laughs> Flande was just called up from AAA. Over the weekend, has started warming up for Colorado. Here's Goldie, a two-run triple his last time up. He's one for three. It looked a little something like this. It's carried over the head of Ryan Raybert in left center. Right off the mound, and it rolls into left center field. Segura scores, born right behind him, a two-run single for Goldie. He's knocked in four, and the Diamondbacks take the lead right back. The pinball wizard, Paul Goldschmidt. That's exactly the way it's supposed to work. Your top two guys in the lineup get on base for those guys in the middle that are paid to drive in runs. Segura and Bourne both with hits to start this inning, and then Goldie picks him up. Three straight hits against Bennis to open up the sixth. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's seven to six. And the trainer's going to come out now and have a look. That LeMay who's limping around, that he's looking at his ankle. Maybe he tried to pivot and make a play on that uh, ball, but as it kicked off the pitcher's mound. Well, he doesn't have a, a hit yet. He can't leave the he game. He can't come out of this game. Because the beat the streak, and that, that would take care of that. All right, looking at the left knee. Let's see if we can pick up what happened there. DJ LeMahieu at second base. Ooh, landed very awkwardly. Yeah, kind of got that left leg up underneath his body as he tried to make that diving attempt. Oh, man. Well, we're sorry, Terry. It was a good run. There ought to be a rule about this. If the guy goes out because of an injury. So DJ LeMayhew will exit for the Rockies. They have Christian Adamas on their bench today. Utility infielder. See what Walt Weiss wants to do here. Well, you hope for LeMayhew's sake that's nothing too serious. He's a fine young man, good young player. Hate to see anybody get hurt. He might double switch here. Yeah, they're going to go to the bullpen now. And Brandon Barnes is going to come out. I'm not so sure the Rockies know what they're doing right now. Daniel Descalso came out, looked like he was. They want the to go somewhere. Brandon Barnes is wandering out there. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. They're signaling for the right hander out of the Colorado bullpen. Descalso has come out and Barnes has come out. So you've got two pitchers and about six or seven infielders out there right now. Well, we'll figure out what Walt Weiss is trying to do here when we come back. But we sorted it out. The left-hander Johan Flande will come on to face Jake Lamb. Just called up from AAA over the weekend after the Rockies had to get a fresh arm following Friday's National League record four-hour and 30-minute game. So the fresh arm is in there. Flande up to the minor leagues. Brandon Barnes will take over in left field. He replaces Ryan Rayburn. And Daniel Descalso takes over for the injured DJ LeMahieu at second. Descalso will hit in LeMahieu's spot, which is second in the order. Pitcher spot is now sixth for Colorado, and Barnes will hit ninth.
So two runs in in the inning for the Diamondbacks. Following the Goldie two run single. He's at first still nobody out and the batter is Jake Lamb. Jake has walked scored a run and struck out twice there's strike one. Here you go BB. Diamondbacks now have 53 hits 53 hits in this series. That ties the franchise record for most base hits in any four game series. There's a little roller. They get one and they turn two. Nicely done by the rookie Trevor Story. Playing that exaggerated shift you see Story right at the top of your picture right there. He's got to run to the bag because there's nobody to throw it to. Nolan Arenado, the only defender on the left side of the infield, had no chance to get to the bag, so Story had to do it all by himself. 53 hits, tying the Diamondback record for base hits in any four game series. It had been done twice previously. Would you tear, care to take a guess where the other two times were? Hmm. Think hard. <laughs> Ricky Weeks Jr. <laughs> Right here at good old Coors Field. Absolutely. As they say here, America's finest ballpark. If you're a hitter. That's what the hitters say. Yeah. Exactly. If you're a pitcher, not so much. Been a good day for Ricky Weeks Jr. Two singles and a walk. He's got an RBI. It is a beautiful ballpark, and it's a gorgeous day. Great day to be out here. If you're a hitter or a fan. Well, Patrick Corbin, the only good news he's going to get today, Bob, is he's off the hook. It was 6 5 Rockies. Now it's 7 6 Diamondbacks. 3 and 1 on Ricky Weeks Jr. You know, over the years, we've had some video and heard some stories about guys when they get the call from their minor league manager hey, you're going to the big leagues. You know, sometimes it brings a tear to your eye. You know, you finally realize your dream for Rockies pitchers in the minor leagues. They start crying for another reason. <laughs> Don't make me go. Oh, please. Three and two. Anything but that. Well, they have to develop their own pitchers here. They've drafted heavily on pitching with their first round picks as of late because you're not going to get a free agent pitcher to sign here unless he's on his last leg. Little broken bat bloop and Ricky Weeks Jr. is aboard for the fourth time today. Three hits and a walk for Ricky. Fourth Diamondback base hit in this inning. And we have a new record. That is 54 hits in this series. We've still got three more innings and an out left in this ball game. That is the record for the most hits in any four game series by a Diamondback Chris Herman trying to add to it but he hits it right to Descalso and the inning ends but the Diamondbacks get two they take a 7 6 lead buckle up.
What's Next brought to you by CenturyLink. The Phillies roll into town. It'll be Robbie Ray game one, Zach Granke game two, and Archie Bradley game three. Two of the pitchers for the Phillies we saw in that uh, the beginning of this road trip, Eikhoff and Eflin. Vince Velasquez, first chance we get to see him this year. Velasquez is a thrilling pitcher to watch. He throws about 110. Oh, good. Coming off an injury. Another crazy ball game. Diamondbacks about hit the Rockies 13 to 8. They lead at 7 6 as Nick Hundley leads off the Colorado sixth against Randall Delgado. Hundley is grounded out and single, one for two. Well, hopefully, he can get some length out of Delgado here, BB. It's one of the things that Randall brings to the table, certainly. Give you multiple innings. Well, you do have the pitcher spot due up third in the top half of the seventh inning, so we'll see how it goes here this inning for Randall. If he can keep that pitch count down, he might get an opportunity to hit for himself. Only three for 12 in a series had a double Friday the day off yesterday. That's this one up in the air playable for Ricky Weeks Junior Segura drifting way out there and he spins around and makes the play. Look how far out there Gene Segura is more than halfway to the outfielder. Well, once again because it is Coors Field, the outfielders play extremely deep. You compound that with Ricky Weeks getting a bad read on that ball. And Gene Segura, the only defender that had a chance to make the play. We've seen a couple plays similar to that. Gene Segura made one at second base the other day. Brandon Drury made one today going out into medium depth center field to make a play. Well, he has had a terrific year, Gene Segura. Brandon Barnes took over in left field. His first at bat today, hitting 220 on the year. How about one more? Ricky coming in this time, got a late break, and he's got it. Charlie Blackman. Charlie Blackman has singled and homered two for three. And a home run is 12th of the year. Blackman has homered now five times in his last seven games. And he's got seven hits in the series. Oh and two. Charlie having a little discussion or maybe a negotiation with Jeff Kellogg. Charlie Blackman now with a seven game hitting streak and he's had multiple hits in all but one of those games. And during the seven game streak he's got five home runs and nine RBIs. Two and two. Just think this guy for a long time even in college was a pitcher. Charlie Blackman. He was a very good high school pitcher in Georgia, got drafted by the Marlins, went to junior college instead, never threw all that hard, developed elbow trouble, moved on to Georgia Tech and became a hitter and wound up hitting almost 400 and was a second round draft pick by the Rockets. And now he's worked the count full three and two, much more selective hitter this year.
worked a walk. He pulled a Goldie. Two out base on balls will bring up the new second baseman, Daniel Descalso, who came on for the injured DJ LeMahieu. Potential run situation for Charlie Blackman over there at first base, as you mentioned, doesn't run nearly as much so far this season as he did last year, but he's stolen six bases in nine attempts. Says the opportunities just haven't been there as often this year to steal bases. Well, Weiss agrees. Weiss was saying, you know, it's a lot easier to steal bases when you're leading the ball game. You can't really do that when you're behind. At least by more than one or two runs. And the Rockies' percentage has been horrible this year. They've stolen 31 bases. They've been caught 22 times. That's a 58 percent success rate, third worst in the National League. Now watch those box. Remember, they called seven box around the major leagues the other night. Apparently, somebody sent out a memo. We had two box in that crazy game on uh, Friday. Scalso singled and scored as a pinch hitter Thursday. Walked and scored Friday. Singled and had an RBI yesterday. Coming off a broken left hand, he's played only 23 games all year. Blackman holds it first. Shallow center field. Here we go again. Segura out there will give way to Bourne, who's got it. And Delgado strands a two-out walk. We have made it through six at seven, six Diamondbacks. Steve and Bob just want to remind Diamondbacks fans that the 10th inning returns to Fox Sports Arizona this time in the form of the local nine a brand new edition premieres right after our telecast today featuring guys like Nick Ahmed Tyler Clipper where I get to ask hard hitting questions like uh, what are you wearing and where do you eat breakfast. What's your favorite color. Yeah. If you could be a tree. Now where is uh, where is that spot. Is that a nice place. That is in uh, that is inside Chase Field. Oh wow. The upper right field area there. One of the cool locations around the ballpark that uh, many people may not have gotten to. Seventh inning and the new pitcher for the Rockies is Jordan Lyles. It's uh, been a tough year for Lyles. Yeah, I believe that was up in the draft room. Uh, yeah. It's a family in town last homestand and uh, they went up there and enjoyed dinner. Watched the first few innings of the ball game from up there. As Monty Tomas leads off the seventh. And there's ball one. Yeah we've been uh, trying to get up there to do a game. I Mostly know a guy. Just so we can hang out. Really. Well, you know a guy, so I. Can. I know you. Yeah, I can that's get about you. it. Sure. So you on, know man. everybody, so I only have to know you. You're, you just need to know a guy that knows a guy. Transitive property, as it were. There's a strength. 
one degree of separation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I have found these guys like talking about living in the valley and what they do. Yeah, I, I, it's the same with a cup of coffee. These guys are great about that. That's why it's so much fun to do those types of shows. Yeah. You get to know, you know, what, what they do, where they live, what they hang out, what the wives like. When I was a kid, I used to go spend my summers and sometimes in the winter visit my older sister in St. Louis, which was a major league sports town. I grew up in a minor league town in Rochester. And see guys like Keith Hernandez at the Schnooks and, you know, Jim Hart at the Kroger. And Jim yeah. Hart, old number 17. That's right. Marvin Bad News Barnes at the Steak and Shake. And, you know, the was, spirits of St. Louis. Yeah. Even maybe a Barkley Plager setting out. And I just remember back then thinking, these guys. They really are human. They're not just on a baseball or football card. Brandon Drury. What, uh, did you get any surprising answers about what guys like to do or where they like to eat? It seems like everybody, everybody on this team, and it's a very young baseball team, as you know, so uh, the breakfast thing, the whole breakfast show oh, up going out in Scottsdale. They like stuff. to go to Butters, right? Oh, yeah, but, yeah. We, trust me when I say, if you want to go to Butters, just tell them we sent you. <laughs> that's Archie. I know that's Archie and oh, Pace yeah. that hang out there. They're yeah. there all the time. Well, here's Drury with a one out. Pitcher spot is up next. Nick Ahmed, the expectant father, is in the on deck circle. Jake Barrett warming up with the bullpen. Set. Gonzalez has it, two down. I got to admit, Todd, when you said, you know, a lot of young guys on the team, I thought you were going to say they all go to Cracker Jacks or you know, some video <laughs> arcade or something. Video? Do they still have those? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you want to go rent some movies later too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Is your VCR still working? Oh, I'll, I'll meet you at Blockbuster. This is the guy who likes it when the newspaper is bigger <laughs> yeah. than the other. So. It's it on his hands. The ink. <laughs> I heard that. Get you a napkin for that. Oh, oh, wet nap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you kids get off my lawn. <laughs> Nick Ahmed. That's going to squirt through a base hit for Nick. That's his fourth hit in the series. Not a boy. Baby's going to need new shoes. That's right. Another chance for Segura, who has been aboard all four times he's been up there. What a job as the leadoff man. Three singles and a base on balls. He scored three times and knocked in a run. You know, wins above replacement. Uh, different statistical websites use different numbers, I guess. But according to baseball reference, Gene Segura now leads all National League second baseman in wins above replacement. He should be an all-star. Should be. Not even close. And with Goldie, Goldie's numbers and Jake Lamb's numbers, they should be there as well. Zach Greinke certainly, too. And if the manager was truly picking the team that he thought could win that all star game, Brad Ziegler would go as a ground ball machine. Yeah, good call. Segura wants it back to the mound. Trying to bunt for a base hit, but Lyles is on it. That ends the inning. Stretch time at Coors Field. It's a 7 6 Diamondbacks lead.
pop quiz. What's today's date? Today's date is uh, June twenty <laughs> fifth. What's today's date? Twenty something. Of June. June. Very <laughs> good. Saturday. Date. The twenty sixth. Chris, I hate to bug you, but um, pop quiz here. Just trying to get your brain going. Um, what is today's date? I don't know. The day of the week? Uh, Saturday. It's Saturday. Very good. Very good. What did you have for breakfast yesterday? Yesterday. Uh, there's a little, little place across the street, um, the little breakfast place across the street, and I had, uh, what did I have? I had, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast yesterday? <laughs> Ooh, I know this. I went to snooze. Oh, okay. Some tacos, yeah, okay. some scrambled eggs. Okay. No, you know what I had? I had two eggs over easy okay. with ham. Okay, with good. Ham. What floor was your hotel in Philadelphia? Uh, 16? Toronto? 19? Oh, uh, 12. Here? Nine. Who did you play Monday? I don't know. What were the floor numbers of your hotel rooms? Eight, fourteen, and nine. Nice. What floor was your hotel in Philadelphia? Philadelphia? Got no idea. <laughs> no idea. Your hotel rooms, in order of appearance, what floor were you on? Philadelphia, Toronto, Denver. Um, the Westin, Ritz Carlton, and Ritz Carlton. <laughs> you can tell me the floors. The floors. Oh, the floors. Yeah. That I have no idea. Okay. 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 I can't get up. Can I just hang here for a while? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm chilling right now. I'm chilling. The great Todd Walsh. He asked the tough questions. You know what's funny? You could ask Mark Gray, say, back in uh, 1990, 2-1 uh, pitch on a Tuesday game against the Phillies, what did you hit? He'll remember that. Couldn't remember what he had for breakfast yesterday. He wasn't even sure what month it was. <laughs> New pitcher for the Diamondbacks, rookie right-hander Jake Barrett. A 2-0 ADRA in 29 appearances. Defensive changes behind him. Nick Ahmed remains in the ballgame and takes over at shortstop. Gene Segura replaces Brandon Drury at second base. So Ahmed will continue hitting ninth pitcher spot, now eighth for the Diamondbacks. And Nolan Arenado leads off the seventh against Jake Barrett. Jake worked a third of an inning Friday night against the Rockies through only seven pitches. So he should be good to go. Arenado singled and scored his last time up one for three. Got to throw this guy strikes. He has more than doubled his walk percentage from last year. Cut way down on the strikeouts. He's pulling the ball a lot more often this year, too. Roughly half of everything Arenado hits is to his pull field. Like this, a little harmless fly ball to left center. <laughs> All right. That was a little nerve-wracking, Ricky Weeks, Jr. Goes down to the books as F7. Add it all the way. Exactly. Never a doubt. Pretty much. Trevor Story has singled, walked twice, scored twice. Well, I really feel bad for Terry Sims. That, that's oh. horrible the way this thing ended. What, what did it, it was up to 50? If he won tonight, it would have been 50. So he was at 40. It ended at 49 for Terry. Tied the all-time high. That is impressive. Now, I'm going to place a lot of the blame now yeah. on Mike Sosha. <laughs> All right, how? Because Terry's original pick today was Yunel Escobar. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Escobar was not in the starting lineup because Mike Sosha didn't put him in there. So Terry had to change picks, went with LeMayhew, and we know what happened here. LeMayhew against the lefty Patrick Corbin. That seemed like a very solid bet. Yeah. He's got a big series. And uh, this didn't work out. LeMayhew walked twice, hit into a double play. Story belts this one deep to center field. Michael Bourne will watch it go. 
Trevor Story, that's his 19th, and we're tied at seven. Third Rockies home run today. Well, the more I see Trevor Story, the more I'm convinced he's a dead breaking ball hitter. That was a slider that stayed in the strike zone, and he just blasted it to straightaway center field. Trevor Story has played 13 games against the Diamondbacks this year and hit six home runs. Mike Butcher out to the mound to talk to uh, Jake Barrett. 443 feet on the Story homer, his 19th of the year. Carlos Gonzalez, last time he was up, he hit a grand slam. He's also singled and walked. The cargo slam was the last pitch in the ball game thrown by Patrick Corbin, who had walked two ahead of him. And it looked a little something like this back in the fifth inning. He said, hopefully. Trevor Story has tied it up. Shift is on for Cargo. The 1 0 from Barrett. This is what it looked like in the fifth inning. Carlos Gonzalez. It's one of those non breaking sliders. We've seen a boatload of those in this series. Spins like a slider, moves like a fastball. His 16th of the year. Carlos Gonzalez always begins that familiar smooth pretty swing from the left side with that big leg kick Bob that right leg but somehow he managed to kind of just keep it flowing nice and smooth. Yeah, obviously used as a timing mechanism and occasionally when he gets into a little bit of a funk he's either too early or too late with that big leg kick but when his timing is right look out sends it out to Ricky Weeks Junior. Christian Adamas now, a pitcher spot is up for the Rockies. Adamas, a couple of hits in the series. He started Friday's game at shortstop. Had a double and a walk and drove into. He's at 224 on the year. Thomas, a switch hitter. He's much better from the left hand side, a 245 hitter, batting left handed. He's under 170 from the right side. And because of the injury to LeMahieu, Descalso took over there. Rayburn came out of the game in favor of Brandon Barnes in left field, and now with Adamas taking the pinch hit at bat, only Tony Walters available off the bench, the backup catcher. Michael Bourne is due to lead off the eighth inning for the Diamondbacks and the lefty specialist Boone Logan warming up in the Rocky bullpen as Adamas hits for Lyles. Jake Barrett behind 2-0. Roller foul right by Stu Cole at third. Three and one. A 
Adamas has a pinch hitter this year, 233. Seven for 30 with eight strikeouts. A two out walk. The seventh walk issued by Diamondback pitchers today. Can't do that and win in this ballpark. It's really a double edged sword. You don't want to groove one and have somebody hit the ball out of the ballpark. So you pitch extremely careful to everybody in this Rockies lineup. You end up walking a guy and then somebody will take you deep. That happened in the fifth. Two walks ahead of the cargo grand slam. Mark Reynolds. 0 for 2 an RBI sack fly in the fourth. Jake Barrett, Bob, remember a few months ago, he had a big splitter that just sort of showed up out of nowhere that was just filthy, but I don't think we've seen it a lot lately. Pretty much standard stuff. That splitter looked like a real weapon for him earlier this year. This is on the ground to Ahmed at shortstop. They get the force on Adamas, and that's the end of the inning. We'll go to the eighth at Coors Field, tied at seven. Of the eighth inning, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. We start the eighth inning at Coors Field. New pitcher for the Rockies, the left-hander Boone Logan. He did not pitch yesterday. He did pitch on Friday, had a rough uh, go of things. Came on in the seventh, gave up Jake Lamb's two-run triple. And later a Chris Herman RBI single. So this is his 29th appearance of the year, a 3-3-2 ERA. And he's got uh, two left-hand hitters coming up in this inning. It's Bourne, Goldie, and Lamb, 2-3-4 and four for the Diamondbacks. And Logan has pretty good numbers against right-handed hitters as well. They've only hit 227 against him this season. Doesn't strike out as many right-handers and walks a few more, but uh, equally effective against righties and lefties. Well, Michael Bourne last time up. Doubled and scored a run. He's one for four. He's got five hits in the series. Michael Bourne, the only center fielder they have right now. The backup with Socrates Brito injured is the catcher, Chris Herman. Chip Pale was telling us today that Chris Owings had a little bit of a setback, taking some ground balls on that sore foot the other day, so they've had to pull back a bit on CO's workouts. They're still hoping that Chris can rejoin the club near the end of the upcoming homestand, but it looks like CO will need to play at least in a 
few minor league games before the Diamondbacks can get him back. And are you seat belt fastened? Eighth inning. Airbag in place. <laughs> we start the eighth inning. So far in this series, three games, there have been 14 runs scored just in the eighth inning alone. Three by the Diamondbacks and 11 by the Rockies. And we enter this eighth inning in a tie game. We are told by the Rockies folks that it's a left knee contusion for D.J. LeMahieu. So that, to this point, is very good news. Rocky second baseman had to leave the ball game a little earlier. Michael Bourne, that ball's going to get down in yeah. front of Blackman. He's at it again, a leadoff single. And here we go, the eighth inning underway. Gentlemen, start your engines. So Logan can't get the lefty out. Now he'll deal with Goldie. And it's the Gig Life High Speed Highlights presented by Cox. Goldie, a two-run triple in the fourth and a two-run single in the sixth. You saw Ryan Rayburn on that triple to left field. Took a couple of extra steps and then crashed into the wall. I wonder if he injured himself out there because Brandon Barnes came in when the, the confusion was happening over there, and LeMahieu came out, and Rayburn came out as well. Holdy now at 303 on the year, the highest his batting average has been this season. Goldie has had 20 plate appearances in this series. He's got eight hits, four walks. Three of those walks have been intentional. And he's batting over 450 on the road trip. One and two. Ball now with 51 RBIs. That ties Jake Lamb for the team lead. Lamb on deck, the 1 2 pitch. They'll keep Bourne close at first. Michael, five for seven in his stolen base attempts. Out of play. And Boone Logan, one of those lefties that doesn't have a really good pickoff move to first base, but he does a nice job of altering his delivery to home plate. That last delivery to Paul Goldschmidt, somewhat of a quick pitch. Holdy strikes out. One down in the eighth. Now Boone Logan getting some good break on his slider so far in this ball game. That went down and in under the bat of Paul Goldschmidt for a swinging strike three. Well, he gave up a base hit to the left. He struck out the righty. Go figure. And now here's the left hand hitting Jake Lamb. Jake walked and scored a run in the first. He has struck out twice and hit into a double play. 0 for 3. Jake tripled in two runs against Boone Logan in game two of this series. That was that high fly ball to left center field that hit off the top of the wall. Just missed going out. Jake has 11 RBIs on the road trip. Down 0 and 2.
Both bullpens are busy. Jason Mott warming up in the Rocky bullpen. Tyler Clippard for the Diamondbacks. Backs have 15 hits in a game, nine for Colorado. Now Tyler Clippard in the Diamondbacks bullpen, just kind of lazily playing catch down there right now. The pitcher spot for the Diamondbacks is now in the eighth spot. Jake Lamb, the number four hitter. So as the Diamondbacks get deeper and deeper into the batting order in this inning, you'll see Tyler Clippard begin to throw a little more, a little more, a little more. And be ready to go in case Chip Hale pinch hits for that pitcher spot. Born bluffs and holds. Jake Lamb fouls that one off. Michael took a big jump there and then put on the brakes. Tough to get much of a lead against Boone Logan. That might have been one of those Dave McKay steals where he says, hey, when he exhales, just take off for second base. And it's so hard as a runner. To do that, you're so used to waiting until you see that pitcher commit to home plate before you break for second base. It has to be a leap of faith. Just inside, and it's two and two on Jake Land. Boone Logan in no hurry out there. Late time granted by Jeff Kellogg. Well, you get Boone Logan pitching to Gregory Polanco or Odubel Herrera, it would be a never ending at bat. Time would stop like a black hole. 2 2 pitch. Got him. Slider. It's another swinging strike. Third strikeout today for Jake Lamb. Two outs, and here's Ricky Weeks Jr. Got the right hander Mott warming up in the Rocky bullpen. The left hand hitting Chris Herman is on deck. Strike one. Diamondbacks trying to take advantage of Michael Bourne's leadoff single here in the eighth. Big day for Ricky Weeks Jr. Three singles, a walk, he's got an RBI. 0 oh 2. Horn takes off, pitches a ball. Michael is in there. His sixth stolen base of the year. I said earlier that the Diamondbacks stole six bases against Nick Hundley in the first game. It was actually the second game of this series. He has really had issues throwing the ball this season. It took Michael a long time to get one that he liked before he had Logan's move down. But now he's in scoring position with two outs and a 1 2 count on Ricky Weeks Jr. Andrew Chafin has started warming up along with Tyler Clifford in the Diamondback bullpen.
Two and two. Well, Boone Logan gives up the leadoff single, then strikes out Goldschmidt, Lamb, and Weeks Jr. We're still tied at seven in Denver. Game summary, it's been a big day for Gene Segura at the plate in the leadoff spot for the Diamondbacks. He's got three singles and a base on balls. He's scored three runs. Goldie has knocked in four. The big hit of the ball game for the Rockies, a Carlos Gonzalez grand slam. Diamondbacks had the lead, lost the lead, got it back. Now it's tied. Back and forth we go. Nothing new here. Jake Barrett back out there for the Diamondbacks, and Nick Hundley, the catcher, leads it off for the Rockies. Beware the Rockies in the eighth inning. They have scored 11 runs in the eighth inning in this series so far. Oh, and two. Tyler Clippert has sat down. Andrew Chafin still warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. Well, I'm sure Chafin is getting ready for Charlie Blackman and Daniel Descalso once LeMahieu came out of the game and put two lefties at the top of the order for the Rockies, and that's probably what Andrew Chafin is getting ready for. And the hard-throwing Carlos Estevez warming up for Colorado. Barrett strikes out Hundley to open up the eighth. Brandon Barnes took over in left field for Ryan Rayburn. Here you go, the eighth inning. It's been good to the Rockies. Well, nine batters in the eighth on Thursday, ten on Friday, nine more yesterday. Jake Barrett throwing strikes. Jake out there for his second inning of work. He gave up the game tying home run to Story in the seventh. Later walked Christian Adamas, but got out of that inning. And now a strikeout of Hundley to open up the eighth. Base hit for Brandon Barnes. He rolls it into left. That brings up Charlie Blackman.
Blackman has singled, walked, and homered. Here comes Chip Hale. Conversation now with Jeff Kellogg. They'll get the lineup cards out. Andrew Chaffin has been warming up in the bullpen, as Bob mentioned. Peter O'Brien is going to go out to left field and replace Ricky Weeks Jr. So a double switch here for Chip as O'Brien takes over and left. And Chaffin comes in back from Denver after this. for 14 runs on 25 hits and the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks the left-hander Andrew Chafin 27 appearances a 7-7-8 ERA he threw 10 pitches Friday here had a walk and was charged with a run he's faced Charlie Blackman twice in this series struck him out the first at bat and got him to pop up to second the next time trying to retire him here for the third time no face Blackman with a one out and Brandon Barnes at first as the go-ahead run Peter O'Brien takes over in left field for Ricky Weeks Jr. Blackman has singled, homered, and walked. O'Brien bats eighth in the Diamondbacks order. Pitcher spot is now fifth. Nathan misses inside, and it's ball one. Charlie Blackman handles himself against left-hand pitching, just under 280 against left-handers this year. That includes a couple of home runs. Make it three now. He homered off Corbett in the third. There's the strike, one and one. Off attempt over there at first base. I've been watching Paul Goldschmidt in this particular situation. Normally, after the pitcher commits to home plate, Goldie will shuffle off the bag as far as he can get off to give himself a lot of range. But for the left handed hitter at the plate that's likely to pull the ball in a tie game late, he's just pivoting and staying right there on the foul line. No doubles. As Monty Tomas in right field is almost in the Rocky bullpen. Now he's signaling into the Diamondback dugout. Where do you want me? And he, Tomas is raising his arms like I don't know where to go. One and two.
He waves at that one in the dirt. Andrew Chafin gets a big out number two in the inning. It's not an easy guy to retire, let alone strike out, but Andrew's gotten him in two of the three at bats he's faced him in this series. Two down now for Daniel Descalso. Took over at second base when DJ LeMayhew had to leave the ball game with a knee contusion. Flied out his first time up. Brandon Barnes, the runner at first, two outs. Ball one. A little darker out there now for the first time today. Just a bit of cloud cover overhead. That one rolls away from Chris Herman and Barnes is in scoring position. That's a big 90 feet. Spike that one in the dirt. I thought it was a breaking ball, but uh, looking at the replay, I think it was a fastball. Wild pitch brings out Mike Butcher. Silvino Braccia was started warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. I would guess he's getting ready for Nolan Arenado and Trevor Story, the next two scheduled hitters for the Rockies, should Andrew Chapin not be able to get Descalso. And the Diamondbacks, who have just beaten up Estevez in the ninth inning so far in this series, well, he's warming up and presumably would get the ninth here for the Rockies. He looks ready to go down there in the Colorado pen. 2-0 on Daniel Descalso. There's the strike. You've got Arenado on deck. Story behind him after Story homered in his last at bat. Descalso, a really good guy to have for Walt Weiss in these situations. This is a guy who in St. Louis played in more than 40 postseason games, including two World Series with the Cardinals. And he works a walk. And here comes Arenado. Arenado today has singled score to run one for four. Tied for the National League lead in home runs and RBIs. Bracho has been warming up. And here comes Chip Hale. He's going to go to the right-hander. 7-7 seven, seven in the eighth. Bracho coming in back after this.
With two on and two out in a tie game in the eighth inning against the Diamondback new pitcher, the right-hander, Silvino Bracho. He came on to work the seventh inning yesterday and walked Arenado, the first batter he faced. He's got a track record against this guy. It goes back to opening day at Chase Field when Bracho, after making the opening day roster, came in and immediately faced Arenado when it didn't work out. Yeah, Non-breaking slider out over the plate, and Arenado rode it way out of their left center field. And Bracho was really shaken up after that. Homer was sent down to the minor leagues immediately following that. Did a good job at AAA Reno. Called up before the game yesterday when they needed a fresh arm following Friday's marathon. And worked a 1-2-3 inning after a walk Arenado to lead off the seventh. So here's the rematch. Two on and two out. Tie game in the eighth. Barnes at second. Descalso at first. Good start for Silvino Bracho. There, strike one and fastball at 93. Arenado has five hits in the series. He's also walked five times. I'm in back. Pitchers have walked eight today. Three of them have scored. Pops him up. First base side for Goldie. Way up there. Straddles the bag and he's got it. And Silvino Bracho gets a big out number three. They survived the eighth. We're still tied. Coors Field 7-7 as we start the ninth inning. Well, for the first time all day, we went an entire inning and nobody scored. What? Yeah, so we're on to the ninth now, and here is Carlos Estevez, who has been a dumpster fire in the ninth inning in this series for the Rockies. The Rockies have owned the eighth. Well, the ninth has belonged to the D-backs, Bob, and all the damage has come against Estevez. Well, that was the Nick Ahmed base hit to win the ball game on Thursday. Osmani Tomas with an opposite field home run against Estevez on Friday. Colorado has not scored a ninth inning run in this series. The Diamondbacks got one Thursday, two on Friday. Michael Bourne with an RBI base hit to the opposite field. Don't forget how you did it. So here we go. Chris Herman will lead off the ninth, 7-7. D-backs have out hit the Rockies 15-10. Trying to take three of four at Coors and win eight of ten on the road trip. Herman had an RBI single in the first, and there's strike one. And 
Estevez may not have been effective in this series, but he can throw hard. We've seen him hit 100. The guy can throw 98, 99, 100. Why does he seem to struggle so much getting guys out? Well, he messes around a lot with that slider, and I would imagine at other venues it's probably a pretty good pitch for him, but like every other breaking ball, for every other pitcher in this ballpark, the slider just doesn't take a lot of breaks. So now you've got an 86 mile an hour off speed pitch that's straight as a string. One and two. Well, the Diamondbacks have had Estevez's number for sure. His ERA this season against everyone else is 282. His ERA against the Diamondbacks is 13 and a half. One and two to Chris Herman. Center field, Blackman coming in. He's got it. Right on the button. Well, Yasmani Tomas has been part of the drama. Tomas hit two home runs on Friday, including a ninth inning home run against Estevez. He has singled in the fifth today, one for four. Ziegler starting to play catch in the bullpen, not really warming up and throwing, just kind of getting loose in case the Diamondbacks can get a run across. One out, Tomas down, no balls and two strikes. Got him. Flat hanging slider that time up above the belt. The guy throws upwards to triple digits. Uh, at least mentally, you tell yourself you got to get that bat started a little bit earlier, and then even a bad slider becomes a good off speed pitch. First at bat today for Peter O'Brien, who took over in left field. Descalso at second base will play behind the bag. They shade O'Brien toward the left hand side, and there's strike one. Now he'll wander a little closer back to the second base umpire, Paul Nart. Ninety eight from Estevez and Pete down 0 and 2. Six for 34 on the road trip, 143 on the year. Peter on the trip, three home runs and 13 strikeouts. Yes, he went. Two strikeouts in the inning. Estevez has a 1 2 3 9. Still tied at Coors Field.
Hold in this series finale, 7-7, bottom nine. Silvino Bracho back out there after getting Arenado to pop up to win. The Rockies threaten the eighth, and now he'll work to Trevor Story to lead off the ninth. Story homered his last time up. He's had a big day, a single, a homer, two walks. He scored three times. Diamondbacks have issues with Jock Peterson of the Dodgers last year. Peterson, the rookie outfielder, homered five times against the D-backs. Well, this year, Story has homered six times against the Diamondbacks. That's a record. Ninety-four misses up, and it's one and zero. Oh. Segura, the second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag. Ahmed with his feet on the outfield grass, and Lamb on the line at third. Home run swing. Bob, if the Diamondbacks have seen what you've seen with Story, be surprised if it wasn't all just fastballs here from Bracho. Yeah, Bracho's got that fast arm. His fastball seems a little quicker than it registers on the radar gun. Yeah, just stay hard up in the zone, hard in. Hit him. Well, they've already lost LeMayhew, the second baseman, to a bruised knee. Now they'll look at their shortstop. And he seems to be in a lot of pain, Trevor Story. I turned right into that one. Looked like he took it on the hand, possibly the right hand. Watch that front side open up. Might have got him in the hand and the collarbone. Take all his gear off so they can get a look at it. Keith Duggar, the head athletic trainer for the Rockies, uh, running through a variety of tests. Scraped him off the fingers and then off the collarbone. Looked like more of a glancing blow on that replay. Look for a long time at that right hand and wrist area. It looks like Story is going to be okay to stay in the ball game. Well, as long as it's not his legs at this point, Tony Walters, the backup catcher, the only available position player for Walt Weiss. He's had to use both Descalso and Adamas off his bench as infield backups. But Story is the winning run on first to lead off the Rocky ninth inning. Pitcher spot is coming up after Carlos Gonzalez and Walters is in the on deck circle. He had a big day here yesterday, including his first career home run. Cargo a grand slam in the fifth. He's also singled and walked. This guy red hot right now, last 30 games. He's hit 380 with 10 home runs, and that was before the Grand Slam. Ball one to Carlos Gonzalez. Diamondbacks have the shift on. 
Jake Lamb in the second base spot. Ahmed all alone on the left-hand side. Big swing by Cargo, and it's one and one. Last ball misses in, two balls and a strike. Pitcher spot up next, Walters on deck. Boy, Osmani Tomas playing extremely deep in right field. He's just a few strides in front of the warning track at the 375 mark. At Yankee Stadium, he'd be 15 rows up in the bleachers. <laughs> he'd be out there with bald Vinny. <laughs> be out there doing a roll call. Two and two to Cargo. Got him. Silvino Bracho, 94, blows him away. Boy, not only 94, but up in the zone. Carlos Gonzalez, a deadly low ball hitter, but missed that one by a mile. Well, here's the hero yesterday for the Rockies. Tony Walters hit his first big league home run yesterday. Three hits, a double, a homer. He drove in four. He's at 217 on the year. This was Tony Walters' first big league homer off Shelby Miller. Fence high fastball out over the plate. Walters. Quick swing by Walter, just got the barrel on it. And a single in the second, a two-run double in the fourth, a two-run homer in the sixth yesterday. Story at first with one out, he's the winning run. Hitting for the pitcher Estevez, Jason Mott ready in the Rocky bullpen. If we get to the 10th. Story takes off for second. Walters hits it in the air, left center for O'Brien. Dory has to hustle back to the bag, two down. That'll bring up Mark Reynolds. Reynolds drove in a run with a sack fly in the fourth. He's hit into two double plays, both times on pop-ups, during which the runner was doubled off, so he's 0 for 3. ball in there for a strike. Stole one. Reynolds homered Thursday off Zach Greinke. He's homered five times in June. All 
three Diamondback outfielders playing way deep. Even born in center, just shy of the warning track. One one. Peter O'Brien could get a Todd Heltenberger where he's standing right now in left field. Yeah, of course, the idea is no doubles. Not that you care about Reynolds hitting a double, but if he does, with Brandon Barnes' speed over there at first base, or rather Trevor Story's speed at first base, he'd be able to score on an extra base hit. So you play extra deep in the outfield, trying to avoid that extra base hit. Any blue pit, Story's going to get third easily. Ball two. Center field, and that ball is gone. The Rockies walk it off. 